four contestants enter, but only one will win. Welcome folks to Lifeline. Let the race begin. And now, introducing tonight's hosts of Lifeline, here's Hungry Gorilla and Gruntiatis. Thank you so much, JSR. And good evening, folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Lifeline, the show where four contestants will try to beat a game they've never beaten before. They'll race to the finish line, taking notes and drawing maps along the way. But to help them out, our team of experts will be on deck with hints. Will they need these hints to finish? Operators are standing by. I'm Hungry Gria, a gaming enthusiast, and I've been streaming on Twitch for almost mm. seven years and play retro variety casually. I've been working through enjoying my physical game collection and occasionally making video game reviews over on YouTube. And I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Grunty Otis. How are you doing tonight, good sir? Hey, I'm fantastic, and I hope you're doing well tonight, too, Hungry. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Grunty Otis, and I've been streaming on Twitch for a little over five years now. Uh, mostly known for speedrunning Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, a uh, little golf, little galf, and trying my hand at Kaizo Super Mario World ROM hacks. Uh, lately, I've been enjoying casual playthroughs of some childhood favorites, uh, and I should be able to beat Ocarina of Time pretty soon before taking part in a Super Smash TV speedrun tournament in March. Uh, you can usually find me somewhere in the retro category, which... Uh, Thankfully, it's given me the opportunity to know great people like everyone working on this show tonight and my amazing co-host, Hungry Gurria. Uh, super excited, though, tonight to see if our panel of top-tier gamers will breeze through this challenge solo, or will they take advantage of all the hint options available to them along the way? We'll find out soon enough. Thank you for having me, and good luck to our contestants. Thanks so much. And I'd like to introduce to you, watching at home, our four wonderful contestants. From left to right, top to bottom, we'll start with a speedrunner with more than a decade of experience under his belt, Skateman222. Skate has put up speedruns in many marathons, including GDQ, where he's run Earthbound, Shantae, Half Genie Hero, and Ape Escape. The reigning champion of the most recent Mega Man 2 glitchless tournament, he's a robot master at variety speedrunning. Case in point, he's a three-time top four finisher in big 20 races, and was one of the first ever to break the sub-four-hour barrier for Earthbound. No stranger to mystery games, Skate has over 500 clears on HowLongToBeat.com. Skate, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight, and how are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, man. You couldn't have written up a better <laughs> intro to myself, <laughs> so uh, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to, to do this race. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Skateman, and I wish you the very best of luck. We tried to get you some competition that could hang when it comes to mystery games. All right. In the top right, we have the next contestant up, Crystal Saver. Uh, this runner is no stranger to blind speed running, literally. Uh, Saver frequently pulls Snake's bandana down over his eyes to run such games as Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda, and Celeste without using those pesky eyeballs for help. But don't let his skill while blindfolded fool you, as he's even more skillful when he has his eyes at his disposal. Uh, he was the first to beat Legend of Zelda for NES Damageless. He's also a two-time champion of the Zelda 1 Randomizer Tournament. Webmaster of BlindfoldedGaming.com. Saber has a finger on the pulse of blind speedrunning. But that said, will they be able to see it through to the end of our mystery game tonight? Crystal Saber, how you doing? I'm doing really great. Thank you for having me on the show. I, uh, I hope to do good, but as long as I get a good pair of eyeballs, I'm going to try my best. All right. Awesome, Saber. I uh, wish you the very best of luck tonight. In the lower left corner, we have Mega Retro Man. This self-proclaimed fledgling speedrunner holds multiple speedrun world records, as well as a couple of Guinness World Records for the highest score on Nintendo Campus Challenge 1991 and Power Fast 94. He's also the first person to have ever scored over 5 million points in Nintendo World Championships 1990, and is also the current world record holder for Ninja Warriors, which he ran at SGDQ 2022. But if you think that's the extent of his skill set, you'd be wrong. He's also a world Class Tetris player with a top 16 finish in the 2019 Classic Tetris World Championship. 
He's good with his thumbs, but can he clutch out the wind tonight? Mega, it's great to have you with us. How are you? Hey, Hungry. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here. This is uh, this is very exciting. I'm very excited to do my very first blind run. Well, good luck to you, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, and our fourth and final contestant is the ever-cool Chill Dragoon. This impressive runner has a comprehensive clear list of over 700 games across a wide range of consoles and series, uh, from Halo to OutRun to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Uh, clearly no stranger to the danger of mystery games, Dragoon has also been known to dabble in single-segment runs of the first 11 Mega Man games back to back to back. That may sound like a rough time for some, and Dragoon has hosted charity streams that raise more than triple their goal for Rough Start Rescue, which is a charity that has helped rescue and foster more than 15,000 dogs, cats, and other furry and feathered friends since 2010. Dragoon, how are you tonight? Doing okay. The best I can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how you and these other three wonderful contestants fare this evening. Best of luck to all four of you. Okay. In a few short moments, we're going to lock them all away in the Lifeline sound booth. Folks in the audience, once we put them in there, they'll no longer be able to hear us or see chat or the restream. They'll be in a vacuum. They can't hear each other and we can't hear them. We won't know their thoughts and we can't help them unless they ask. However, before we begin, JSR is going to tell our contestants just a tiny bit of what to expect going into today's game. So listen closely. Thank you so much, Hungry and Grunt. Gentlemen, good luck tonight. I'm going to give you some free hints to get started. So if you've got something to take some notes down, get ready. Uh, first, some of the maps in this particular game can be a little confusing, but most of them aren't as complicated as they might seem at first. There are plenty of NPC characters to talk to that have helpful information about your mission, so don't be afraid to read what they have to say. However, when in doubt, the time it might take you to figure out the thing you need to do could be greater than the time it would take to use a hint like your lifeline, and that is the name of the game. Your controls are pretty simple. Your D-pad will move you around, and you can equip various items to A and B. Think like Link's Awakening. Uh, if you hit select, you can see your inventory, and there are many other hidden items, such as supplies and ammo, hidden all over. So don't be shy about spying around in houses and stock rooms. If you get stuck and can't figure out how to progress, don't forget about those hints. And if you're looking for a freebie, I've got a couple for you. Very fitting to the title of this mystery game, there is a casino that you'll have to infiltrate at some point. Not all of us can be winners. I mean, they, they have those nice floors for a reason. So if you find that you've lost your shirt at the tables, don't panic. Just go see the cashier again, and your, their friends in England will wire you some spare cash. Your benefactors will also graciously provide you with a radar dish that displays your relative location on the map. This can prove useful to our more resourceful mappers and can even help the most confused agents regain their bearings. Oh, and I'll throw you one big freebie because I'm feeling kind of generous tonight. Save and quit will save your inventory, but resets your location to the spawn point. So this might be useful when it comes to stockpiling supplies for emissions. We can't have our agents bleed me out in the field, you know. All right, back to you, Grunty Otteson, Hungry Gurria. Okay, JS, sir. Thank you very much. If you wouldn't mind escorting our four lovely contestants into the sound booth. Once the race begins, they will no longer be able to hear us. When they need to use a hint, our hardworking staff behind the scenes will have everything well in hand. Once we have confirmation from you that we are ready to go, we'll go ahead and reveal the game to you, folks. Okay. Are our contestants ready? Grunt, our contestants are shaken, but they're not stirred, and operators are standing by. Okay, folks, contestants, chat, let's play Lifeline in five, four, three, two, one, go. So today's game is James Bond 007, developed by Sapphire for the Game Boy and released in 1998. 
It was released just after the smash hit N64 title GoldenEye 007, and this top-down action RPG is a really fun game full of Bond charm and exploration. Grunt, have you tried this game out yet? I have not played this, uh, but I think everybody would have a better time watching your YouTube review of the game rather than hearing about my experience anyways. Uh, it was really well done, like all of your videos, of course. Well, that's very nice of you to say. And honestly, I'm really glad I played this one. I loved it, and I'm happy to be able to give out some hints. Wait a second. Are you talking about those hints? Mm-hmm, I sure am. Would you like to tell the folks at home about the four hints that these competitors will have at their disposal this evening? Absolutely. All right, each contestant will have at their disposal four separate hints that they can use at any time, with a few caveats. All right. If they need help, they may ask somebody. Each contestant has a friend standing by. If they use this hint, they can ask them anything they want, but they only have a minute before we'll cut them off. They may also ask for a 50-50. It's as simple as this. They ask our, ex our experts a question, and we'll give them one right answer and one wrong answer. It's up to them to decide which one to use. Next, they may poll the chat. This is a simple one minute poll of chat where we'll take the answers you folks at home give us, and then we'll relay them to the runner. Now, they also have a fourth hint the namesake of our show, The Lifeline. Okay, this is the most powerful and the most deadly hint. Each runner may use their lifeline at any given time, but it comes at a big price. They'll ask us anything they want, any single question they'd like, and we'll have to answer it straight up. However, they'll have to sit in our penalty box for exactly two minutes. They have to put their controller down and wait. Any movement at all will restart the clock. Okay, so this hint is very powerful, but very risky as well. So it might be prudent to save it for last, or, you know, perhaps this sort of advantage might be a huge head start early on. Will those two minutes leave them shaken and not stirred? I guess only time will tell. Thank you so much, Gruntiatis, and all the best, of course, to our runners this evening. And thank you so much to everyone who has already piled in for the very beginning of this, hopefully, very exciting race. And as someone who just played through this recently, there's an awful lot of stuff to run through for this particular adventure, including some sleuthing, lots of NPC discussion, and tons of item finding. So I'm looking forward to seeing how everybody here is going to do this evening. Uh, this uh i've watched a little bit I've seen a few of the uh <laughs> the ways this game can treat somebody and i am very intrigued to see how these runners are going to handle it tonight uh really looking forward to this one this is going to be a lot of fun yeah and i kind of appreciate how this game kind of diverts from the regular kind of james bond well-known lore out there in the world of video games, this one has kind of flown under the radar quite a lot in terms of its discoverability. And it's neat to see something that is so different from everything else that's been released from this particular franchise. You still do get to use, you know, your fair share of weapons and stuff, but it's a completely different feeling game than a first-person perspective game where you're running around with a, a waggly arm trying to beat down bad guys and complete your missions. Oh, and I mean, can can we talk about the arms on James here? Just the look of the sprite, I love it. It almost reminds me of uh, uh, Battle Kid in a way that's kind of that off-center little <laughs> quirky face. <laughs> the animations are so awesome in this. It definitely reminds me. I think that guy's name is Timmy in Battle Kid, if I'm oh. remembering correctly. And truth be told, I think I spent about the first 10 minutes of this game just dancing with the punch and block moves because they were so funny to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For such a simple looking sprite, there's a lot of charm in it, which you would expect from James Bond. 
Well, and the Game Boy in general, too. Uh, it's it's amazing how much they can get out of something like this, where, you know, a lot of the, the tiles might be reused, but if you notice one small little difference, maybe it's important, maybe it's... Uh, Maybe it's not, but uh, we can kind of see the players, they're, they're doing the classic, I'm going to check everything and everywhere. <laughs> Let's make sure no stone is left unturned here, so. Yeah, I think that Very that's a good. pretty, it's a pretty important thing in this game, and it actually does a really good job of teaching you that really early, because it's not the kind of game where it seems like there's much that stands out from the background. You're not really looking at a room and saying, oh, I'm going to check this spontaneous chest that is very obviously there in the corner. You kind of have to check everything, and, and they kind of give you a good lesson there with the beds and the med kits. There's one fellow in one of these houses here in China that directs you to make sure that you're searching things. So it's a good lesson to learn early, which I really appreciated when I played it, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because when it's it's not a standard going from left of the screen to the right of the screen platformer, you have just so many, so many items that can be used and hilarious punching stances to try out. I mean... You want to make sure that you're doing everything as much, or finding as much as you can before you uh, progress on. So, but I mean, we also have a, a time limit to tonight as well. So, how much do you battle? How much do you search? Do you try just run ahead? Uh, really looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Yeah, totally. And it looks like Chill Dragoon is actually quite a ways ahead so far. Just beat down on the first boss and is now kind of heading out toward the end of the first area here. So a clear leader in this early little bit of the race so far. Well, I mean, the enemies are foolish enough to bring a gun to a hilarious punch fight. I mean, they didn't stand a chance here. <laughs> well said. Yeah, and, and in terms of the availability of items and things throughout the game, it does get quite interesting because you've got a lot at your disposal depending on, of course, how you want to go about playing. And it's wonderful to kind of see how much diversity and choice that they give you in terms of how you approach different problems. So right now, most people are still dealing with just the good old punch and block, but there are quite a lot of different weapons and other things that they'll find later on as the game unfolds that will be pretty cool to see and i'm curious to see how differently everybody's going to play different enemy types as well as figuring out how to kind of defend against them as well because there's tons of stuff on the defense end surprisingly yeah that was one thing i noticed and of course we don't want to we don't want to say too much too soon or anything but uh they they did a really good job of just making sure that you are thoroughly engaged at all times with any item, any area, and uh, thankfully, the runner should know, have that notepad ready, because a few areas look fairly straightforward, and a few not so much, too, so there should be some good opportunities for maybe, like, say, where Chill Dragoon had taken the early start, maybe gets a little tripped up where somebody else takes those careful notes, gets to move on, so... It is far from over yet, that's for sure. Oh, definitely. And it's pretty neat, too, in terms of how the game unfolds. It's kind of one of those adventures where it's kind of segmented out, so it's it'll be neat to see how well people kind of approach the lack of carryover between different areas, too. Um, and I don't know if it's saying too much too early, but you'll often find that you don't have a lot of the things that you left the last area with sometimes. But I think the thing I'm looking the most forward to here are some of the really cool character cameos and whether they're friendly or foe. I'm looking forward to seeing how they deal with all of them as well. Well, I, I'm just going to point out I'm really, uh, I guess, just drawn to the color palette in the top left. <laughs> so I've been kind of watching Skate Man a little bit more, but you've you've diverted my attention down to Chill Dragoon. It's looking pretty good. Looks like Saver is uh, reaching about the point where you mentioned where Chill Dragoon kind of pulled ahead there. So yeah, it seems like Chill Dragoon still has quite quite a bit of a lead there. But I see some folks in chat digging the music, and I'll say that the soundtrack in this game is phenomenal. They do so many nods even if they're just little nods once in a while to all of that really beloved James Bond music. 
So get ready for a good ear fest over there. It'll be a feast for the ears, if I may put it that way, because every single track in this game is amazing. Anna, Anna. I'm really glad that I left all of the singing to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's in our contracts. So I was going to ask, have you played any James Bond related stuff in the past, by the way? Or is this something that you might want to play someday to completion? Um, Actually, I have kind of been collecting a few different new systems and I did score a bunch of Game Boy games. Uh, right now, more or less playing through a few that I've played in the past just to relive some good memories. Um, uh, some golf games and that, but I do have this in my list to play. I think the first 007 game would have been GoldenEye. And then there was one on the GameCube that I can't remember, but it was really fun. So any James Bond game I've played has actually been a fun experience for sure. So, And the little bit that I saw, I, I think I'll probably end up playing this one. Will I complete it? Will I just try it for an afternoon? We'll have to see, but... Yeah, hopefully when you do get around to it, you'll like it quite a bit. And it also looks, folks, like Chill Dragoon has pulled ahead to the second mission already. So busting into a brand new place and starting the next leg here. Getting a little word about a prisoner and a scheme to the west. Let's see how that plays out. Not sure if they needed to to punch that person, but they did, and they got a delicious sugar cube as a reward by the looks of it. Uh, moving on. And what's nice, too, is sometimes you're walking around and you don't really know if anybody's your friend until it's too late. So you said, I wonder if they should have punched that guy. Um, he had a gun and sunglasses, which automatically would imply he's an enemy. But there are some folks sometimes you run into that are, are your buddies and you want to talk to them. But yeah, I, I shoot first, ask questions later in this game. And usually I felt really bad after the fact. <laughs> well, if any police training movie scene has taught me anything it's obvious good people are you know old ladies and people with strollers and bad guys yeah they're wearing trench coats they have hats on and sunglasses with you know if the gun's there you got to shoot first right oh totally yeah and i see chill dragoons just walking by that lake with all of those nice animals having a nice bath we're in a very hot part of the world and i can't recall whereabouts that was actually supposed to be in the game like where we've just ventured off to but everybody else i think is still wrapping up the china section i know it's not much but even just the little details like you see the little fly buzzing around from time to time and stuff like that it's uh never never ceased to amaze me how much they could put into tiny games uh, i remember there was a Super Mario Land, one of them where you were Wario, and he had the, the jetpack hat and stuff like that. Just so much fun to be had. And like for an event like this, where it's only four hours, it was perfect for car rides. You know, if you're going for a three, four hour car ride somewhere, the Game Boy was just amazing. Because, you know, who wants to have conversations in a car for four hours when you could be playing a video game? I agree, except in my case, my parents were very stingy on the batteries, and I was not really allowed to take my Game Boy out of the house too far, so I had an AC adapter and picked the best window in the house and just hammered away at Link's Awakening pretty much day in, day out until I got to the seventh labyrinth and then didn't play it again for a decade, so I eventually came back and finished it, but I found the Game Boy library is one of the most impressive to me in terms of the diversity there, and then also how much content there is in some of these games too. I know a lot of people write off the Game Boy as, oh, it's a little cartridge and therefore a little adventure. But truth be told, there are quite a lot of really excellent adventures to be had there. And this one, for me anyway, was a very surprising one that I was not expecting to be as good as it is. It has no right being as good as it is for a first time playthrough. And it's really cool 
that these folks are getting to play it in race mode, of course, but even just for a casual playthrough of the game, it's it's worth playing, in my humble opinion. I think it's definitely something everyone should pick up and play at some point, because it's fun. And yeah, you're, you're speaking about the diversity of some of the games. I'm trying to remember all I could think of was Bubsy, uh, but that is not it. <laughs> I've been seeing few people play Bubsy lately. Um, but yeah, titles you wouldn't even expect to see on the Game Boy, like that are Super Nintendo ports or Sega Genesis even on some of them. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's always fun. And being the younger brother, you know, sometimes the Game Boy was the only option while <laughs> something else was being used, too. It looks like we have a couple of runners now that are in the intermediary visit in London prior to heading out as well, out to Kurdistan. So it looks like it's just Mega Retro Man who is still in China and Skate Man and Crystal Saber have moved on. All right, and yeah, Skate Man is making sure to punch everything in that office. And I'm loving the animation. It's actually very funny because the control in order to speak to people and search is either uh, your punch or your block in this case, what most people still have equipped here. So it looks like you're just going around bopping everybody while you're trying to search, which I think is hilarious. Who doesn't love to start a good conversation with a, a big punch to the shoulder blades? The, you know, Great icebreaker. Yeah, totally. So the main goals of this part are really trying to do a lot of, um, how would I put it? It's almost like fetch questing. So quite a few of these little spots involve talking to somebody, finding out a piece of information, and then going to find another item, and then so on and so forth to be able to progress the mission. So most folks here are looking for um, essentially an item like an item chain to be fulfilled. And you can see here, for example, Chill Dragoon, who's still in the lead, has found the machete and busting out the chopping abilities of that in order to get through some of the local plant life to open up new pathways. So in many ways, a lot of these areas are also barred from being able to move forward until you find an item to get you through. And the machete is the really key thing that serves not only as something to open up the world a bit more here, but also as your first real ranged weapon that's a little bit beyond a stubby punch. Well, just kind of take notice to the health bar as well. So since you've played through this, um, and I know it's small, so that usually comes in, or it's going to go down in chunks, but... Did you find the health to be fair in this game, or is that something that could really be a concern for everybody? I think it's a pretty big concern, especially in some areas where you'll find that the enemies will scale up in difficulty quite a bit. So how they are coming at you will change a lot. When people are just punching you back, it's not so bad, but that health bar doesn't last very long as you get further into the game and people kind of escalate what kinds of weaponry they have at their disposal. So I found... At least having a med kit or five <laughs> really helped in order to be able to heal up regularly. And having that little bit of a health cushion was very beneficial. And the way that some of these item drops work in this game, if you're not familiar, you can find them by searching or they can drop from attacking enemies. Um, those little sugar cubes that Gruntiatis mentioned a while ago can contain any random item inside, whether that's ammo, whether it's weaponry, or heals as well. So there's quite a lot there. Some of it's a little bit randomized, of course, especially the enemy drops, but if you know where to find items in a level, if you die, you can always go back and pick them up again. All right, a chill dragoon tries to return the machete, but uh, that person says, hey, on the house just use it against the evildoers here so that's got to be good news because he is loving hacking everything apart in sight with that thing right now and mega retro man had just finished up one of the first bosses punching away making sure nothing is uh no stone left unturned over there but should be moving on fairly soon i would think 
Yeah, and we can see the, the scenic animal bathing up on Skate Man Stream as well, as well as over on Crystal Saver, some penned animals just enjoying the heat of the Middle Eastern sun. And I have to say, if somebody busted into my house with a machete and started flailing it around and just left, I'd feel pretty grateful. <laughs> I don't know if grateful is the word that I thought you were going to use there, but... <laughs> That's good. Okay. There is... Oh, there we go. Looks like Skate Man now with Machete. I, st I still just love the, the sideways punch animation. I can't get enough of it. It's pretty great. And honestly, a lot of the NPCs in this game are also very cute. There's folks that just kind of we just passed by one i think in in chill dragoon's screen where there was somebody just wiggling away i think it's supposed to be a dancer but there's lots of folks as long as they're not trying to attack you that have a lot of charm as well and there's not actually a lot of uh, sprite repeating there is in some of the enemies that you fight but you will meet a lot of really unique characters in this game and i find even as we were saying a while ago that they're just little sprites there's so much personality and I really feel like this game did a good job, too, in the location, accurate surroundings, even some of the buildings, like the diversity that you see in the different areas you go to. It's quite lovely just how much thought that they put into everything that kind of went down here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got uh, what we can see just on the, the waterfront, the beautiful styling of the house. And then we saw uh, the trees that were on the screen to the right on Mega Retro Man's. And then... I don't know on Skate Man screen if those are barrels of apples. Are they uh, pots of flowers? <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's a pretty diverse amount of sprites already. And I'm not sure exactly how many levels there are. I don't know if I want to say anything along those lines. But from what I saw, um, it, they only keep it coming. They, they keep it looking really good, so... Fun game by the looks of it. Lots of health packs just kind of lying around in the weeds for Crystal Saver up there. And blank pad of paper might come in handy. All right, one more item grab. Yeah, it looks oh. like we're going to run in in Chill Dragoon stream to the first pun, James Bond pun, unless it's come and gone already if he chooses to speak to the barkeep and he's gone <laughs> never it mind like he did speak i i saw the word stirred there so aha uh -huh. yes so yeah you'll find a lot of the and i haven't seen a single james bond movie in my life but how would you go through your entire life and not hear the shaken not stirred bit so if you're a yeah. fan of this game it's a phenomenal one to play because there's a lot of little bits and pieces of fan service but as somebody who never got familiar with it whatsoever in any shape or form um, this was definitely something that i could pick up and play and still really enjoy despite not really being a fan not because i wouldn't be a fan if i'd seen the movies but just not having had that experience yet yeah i've seen a, a few but i, I definitely haven't uh, seen a lot of the the older you know, Sean Connery era and before the, I guess I, I can't think of this. I'm terrible with actors names, but uh, yeah, even just having a few movies under the belt, I, I would say they do a good job of kind of repeating, getting to know certain familiar characters. As long as Q is giving you the specialized weaponry, uh, exploding pens or, laser-filled band-aids. I don't know. That, that guy can make anything, apparently. But uh, it's it's a small cast, it feels like, even though they have such a large amount of movies, in a way. So pretty easy to just pick up and get into, if you ever decide to. Absolutely. And that seems to be something I should probably do one of these days. And just for anybody... Um, who might be wondering, Chill Dragoon is still well in the lead, just headed into the next, next chapter, um, has just run into a person who was trapped, had gone into now a hotel, and is going to lead into one of probably the most nefarious sections of this game. If you're familiar with it, you might know what I mean, but pretty soon we're going to have some fun.
And Grant, I feel like you and I both not knowing a lot of actors is good. We make a good pair because I only know Pierce Brosnan from the front of the uh, GoldenEye box. And we had a very long discussion when I played through this game about which bond this is actually based on. And I think okay. folks probably told me about 9,000 times. And guess what? I've completely forgotten which bond it's supposed to be based on. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't even think on... I'm still the guy who thinks the 90s was 20 years ago. You know, or 10 years ago. Was it 15? I don't know. It's time. <laughs> I'm not really sure. So I don't know. Well, this game, what was it? It was 1998 this was released? It feels really late. I'm, I'm really happy they still made so many games for the Game Boy. Oh, the lifetime of the Game Boy was stretched over at least a decade. And there was so much that kept coming out, like they just wouldn't quit. So I'm really glad for that, of course, because there's just so much that came out after those initial games that made all the little children fall in love with a handheld way to play some stuff, right? So it's pretty cool to see. Okay, well, actually, I'm seeing that Nintendo published this game after GoldenEye was a hit. Uh, because they were due to lose the 007 license, uh, they quickly made a Zelda clone, and Sapphire really knocked it out of the park. Uh, it was generally positively reviewed amongst most major publishers, uh, with the big praise around the characters and Easter eggs. The big criticism was it didn't quite feel like a 007 game. So there we go. I'd like to know what people thought 007 should feel like in game form, quite frankly, because... And like I say, I, I don't know much, having not seen the movies, but you're what, running around to different places, solving mysteries, being covert about it. You're meeting people and trying to figure stuff out and, and being an agent. So <laughs> unless they just wanted something with a lot more action in it. But to me, I find that this has all of the pieces of what would be like your typical uh, crime solve mystery kind of game. Well, most are being covert, except for Crystal Zay. He has been slashing that machete everywhere, so not exactly sneaking around at the moment. But I know what you're saying here. So he's, he's getting to know the weaponry, stuff like that. But I, I guess you would think that most of them were first-person shooter style, if I had to guess that would be a criticism. But, uh, you know, we've, we've all seen the making Doom run on a fridge display. Uh, do you really want that on the Game Boy? <laughs> I don't think you do, so. It was an interesting choice, maybe a departure from what you would expect, but it seems like they've, say, a lot of the charm is still there. Yeah, and I think that's what I felt was the most important part with this game. It was very charming, and it had quite a lot of that fan service I keep mentioning that did not ring true for me, because... Yeah, what do I know about it? But it did have quite a lot of of cuteness to it, as much as an action game like this needs cuteness, who can say? But I did really like how much it just kind of stuck with me. I looked forward to playing this game a lot. And it also seems, too, like uh, a lot of our players now have access to a new weapon, and that is the pistol. And if you don't know about a little bit about how the weapons work in this game, you pick up weapons and then you kind of keep them, but you run out of ammo for them. And ammo does drop quite frequently. So uh, for myself, as a hoarder of all things consumable, I tended to just flail around with a machete for most of the game and didn't really experiment too much with some of the guns and the different ammo. But yeah, I did lean into them a little further later on. But it's nice to see people kind of switching up what they're using and trying to get a feel for what different things will do. But uh, I did actually find it quite funny because in some cases, the punch is actually just as effective in terms of damage as some of the bullets that you got, <laughs> depending. So four punches or four, four gunshots will have the same effect, which is very funny. Interesting. All right. Sorry to step in real quick, Hungry and Grump, but we have a contestant ready for a hint. Well, all right, yes, sir. Well, that's good because operators are standing by. All right, Skate Man, you have elected to poll the chat. In just a moment, we're going to start a poll, and in one minute, we'll have your answers. Are you ready? Yes. Go ahead and ask your question. 
All right, plain and simple. Where do I go next, chat? Please help me. All right, chat. There's a Q, uh, poll live now. We have one minute. Help Skate Man figure out where to go. There are four answers in the poll at the top of chat. So stand by, Skate. You can continue looking around if you'd like, but we'll have your information in just a moment. Please. And we have a few votes going, so we'll have to wait and see what chat thinks. Hopefully they've been paying attention. We want you, chat, to help out. That is indeed the scenario, Zedlar. So, folks, it's now or never. If you want to help Skate Man, get your votes in. They count for about another 15 seconds. So the clock is ticking. And you know Skate Man's ready to get going. All right, Skate, we are about to wrap it up. And we have your four answers. Are you ready? Yep. With zero votes, shoot a prisoner. With one vote, <laughs> find Q in the mountains. Where two votes, pet the goat. And with seven votes, give a ring to a prisoner. Best of luck to you. And back to you, Hungry Gorilla and Gruntiatis. All right. Well, hopefully Skate Man takes that advice to heart and goes on a wonderful adventure trying to get that done. And pet the goat. Fantastic. Fantastic choice, folks. I tried to pet the goat so often, <laughs> and I don't think you can. Aww. It looks like Chill Dragoon has also just arrived at the casino, so this was the, quote, nefarious area I mentioned a while ago, where you more or less have quite a lot to get done uh, in order to move forward. And a lot of it involves random chance, because you really have to worry about losing all your money. <laughs> and that can happen if things go terribly wrong. So it's a, it's a pretty tricky spot to get through, but we'll see. We see Chill Dragoon just lost all the money, goes back to the window to get some more. And this will be likely a rinse and repeat scenario. And this, I know for me, was a place that I got held up quite a while. I think any game that has a casino moment, or even just a straight-up casino game, um, I, I really feel like it's not actual odds. <laughs> I think they like to just dial up the, the difficulty a little bit just to keep you playing a little bit longer, so uh, we're already seeing a, a full rebuy. Coming back for Chill Dragoon, so let's hope uh, the dealers are not too rough on them at the tables here. Well, Chill Dragoon was doing a wonderful job of running around asserting dominance by punching the air all the way back over to that table again. So let's hope that that helps out a little bit. But I will say that things went so terribly for me in the casino that it felt rigged for a while. And for those of you that might not know, uh, the goal of this area, in case you've missed it, is to gain enough money by gambling to get into the high roller room because you need to have a rendezvous with somebody in there. So that's what their aim is if you've missed it in the game. I guess the other question, has everybody played blackjack before? Uh, that could be... That could be a tricky part, too. Maybe they don't know the rule. But that's where we do have our four hints available if need be. But Thankfully, it is just Blackjack. I think that's probably one of the more well-known, I guess, of table games. Yeah, I think in here there was that Red Dog game, which I was not familiar with, as well as Blackjack. And then there's Baccarat that you're trying to get in to be able to play. So, um... Oh. Yeah, I don't play too many card games, but I am familiar with Blackjack, and I still lost my shirt playing that. <laughs> yeah, we just saw Blackjack from the dealer, followed up by yet another big win. So GG to the dealer. Uh, you are taking all of Chill Dragoon's money very fast. So not exactly getting the luck side of things just yet. Uh, will this be an opportunity for others to catch up? The other contestants want that to happen, but uh, that, that could be a little frustrating experience for poor Chill Dragoon here. But... 
Yeah, and this will definitely make or break some people's runs. And as far as I know, and I'm not quite sure, but I feel like a lot of this is left to chance. So if you do run into a slew of losses back to back to back, your competitors might win right away. So I'll be curious to see if Chill Dragoon keeps the lead here or if there's going to be somebody else who slips on by. Alright, we've got some hanging out poolside up there for Crystal Saber. Yeah, and it seems like Skateman has just entered the Marrakech area where the casino was located, so catching up here as well. Yeah. Oh, bottom left. Are we going to get our pun that we just quite missed last time? Have they spoken to the bartender or not already? Let's see. I love that they just heard, nobody goes out this door, and tried to go out the door. There it is. You want that shaken, not stirred? They said the thing! They said the thing, and they say it every single time you go to any bar ever in this whole game. It's like they all practice from the same bar school. And I'll say too, uh, we see Crystal Saber right now is trying to maneuver down to the casino. And this whole area is quite large and very samey looking. It's very maze-like. There's a lot of places to kind of check into, lots of doors, lots of dead ends as well. And it is quite challenging to find your way through. Um, <laughs> as someone who took a very long time to find their way through, I am blown away at how fast people are making it through, so good for them. <laughs> Honestly, when watching some of the, some of your video and, and, uh, yeah, this, this does kind of look, say it's a large area, especially for Game Boy, maybe there's a fair bit of backtracking or what it is. So making sure you remember what location things are in could be, could be pretty huge right here. Who's got a good memory? And, uh, we're looking down. No more $500 bets from Chill Dragoon. <laughs> the time to win is now, or just lose it all. Come on. Come on. No. Not yet. All right, so everybody's getting a chance to catch up here. Yeah, and we can Crystal see Crystal Saber. Saber. I was just going to say, Crystal Saber is just pulling up to their first table to let her rip. So let's see how this is going to go. And we've got Mega Retro Man as well, fighting that nice fellow, that very large man from the end of the last section there, the boss, um, with the item that was given over. I forget what that thing is. It's like a explosive pocket watch, or I forget. One of Q's classic toys there, maybe. Oh, yeah. got hooked with a big, big punch there. Yeah, you'll yes. see when you've got a, a man as large as that punching you, <laughs> that health bar really doesn't last very long. Yeah. Plus, uh, he's... Not to sound like a UFC announcer, but he's got control of the octagon right now, and uh, you don't have much room to run around on the outside, it seems. So. It seems but so. the machete... The machete, the equalizer... <laughs> it looks like Mega Retro Man is kind of scared to engage until... Uh, the giant is hulking out in the middle of the ring. I don't know what's going on. I don't know which reference to even make at this point. That that fight is all over the place, but it's done now. Oh no, did they leave without picking it up? Is that a thing you pick up? I don't think you can take it with you. I think it's meant to be deployed as something that stuns the giant guy there, and then you run away and go speak with the prisoner here to go off to, I think it's Marrakech that's next. I think that's where everybody else is already, and Mega Retro Man not too far behind anyway. Oh, that's why he was hulking out in the middle. He was stepping on the, the watch. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah, and, and to my eye too, when I played it, I'm like, why is this guy dancing for me? Why is he flexing? I want to get rid of him and move on what's happening it's not very obvious to me anyway how many canadians does it take to figure out a wrestling match in a cave probably more than us <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm still guessing we've got it right uh we might not. i was gonna say also too skate man has walked past a dog several times and not tried to pet it although i wonder if that was a means to not accidentally slash the dog 
which is also a very nice thing to be doing too, because you'd have to poke him with the machete. So maybe a wise decision. Yeah. So it seems like everybody's kind of caught up to the same area here. Everyone's in Marrakech and hopefully going to get into that casino area, start fighting the good fight. We still see Chill Dragoon trying their very best to get through the initial part of the casino run. So you can see how much of an equalizer this particular point is. Hopefully Chill Dragoon will have some luck soon. It's like you say on one hand it's it's kind of nice that it gives everybody a chance to even the race up but it's it's one of those not like this kind of moments too it's a little rough you hate to see it but as a contestant we gotta see will crystal saber yeah he's already just 970 let's do the thing I was waiting for the moment where Crystal Saber would lose it all, and there it went. So still fighting the good fight here. And I think we have Chill Dragoon who's made it into the Baccarat room yes. to get into that area, the High Roller room, past that threshold amount that's required to get in. Win. Lose. Lose. Win. Lose. I'm learning a lot about Baccarat. How about you out there, Jack? Are you following along at home? Because I don't know how to play back around. I think we should... Hmm. Not really sure what's, uh, what the objective, but... $3,000. And looks like the walk of shame is going on over at Crystal Saber's uh, corner, so... A very Back wise. I was just going to say a very wise person once told me that the walk of shame is also the walk of future triumph because eventually you're going to have to win. So hopefully. Hey, there you go. Yeah, I hope the tables turn pretty soon. Okay, and we see Skate Man. How they doing here? Make sure you are prepared. Getting all kinds of. All kinds of sad stories about losing streaks at the tables, but there we go. So, Chill Dragoon has managed to keep the lead a little bit here, but who knows? The odds didn't seem in uh, anybody's favor just yet, but we can only hope that Skate Man and Crystal Saver both just get some really good hands really fast, and we got ourselves a tight race again. Absolutely. And Crystal Saber going back again to the teller. I guess it would be a teller to get yeah. some more money. <laughs> yeah, apparently they just had a bajillion dollars to lend to this casino for bond because they knew that it was rigged. <laughs> yeah. They hesitated to send anybody on this mission for months because uh, they knew the the spy budget would just just be terrible for the following year. Absolutely, and Mega Retro Man, I think, is currently searching out the way to the casino, I suppose. There's a lot of... Uh... Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, there's a lot of tourist attractions along the way, like fruit stands and, and shops that don't sell you anything to pull your attention as you're trying to find your way through. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was going to say they were either going to find the natural path or they were going to machete their own way to that casino because <laughs> they're just hacking away, trying to look for secrets like you do. Skate Man's just chopping apart a whole other table in frustration, I think. I don't even think that was looking at anything. So here we go. Back to the table. We got a win on Saber's side. Oh, cautiously bringing it down. Probably the $500 bet. And, oh, not bad, 19. Big 2,500 Crystal Saber on the way. There I we go. So that didn't take as long for Saber. No, and so now we are back into two players of our four that are pretty close. Um, I would say Chill Dragoon's still in the lead here overall, but Crystal Saber is not far behind. Right. 
And I really don't think there is any quick way or guaranteed way to play the odds here and to push through. Like, nobody's gonna find a damage boost route <laughs> through the casino part. It's really just a matter of getting lucky. Yeah, unfortunately... Well, I guess <laughs> I would probably scratch this game off of any... Uh, you asked if I wanted to play this in the future. I'm, I'm gonna say casually. I don't think this is a speedrun opportunity I'm seeing right now. Because I can't even imagine however long it takes to even get to this point, and then one seat at the table, and you might have to reset the entire game. With how these odds are looking for these poor runners right now. Yeah. I think I'll skip the speedrun. I was going to say, I don't know much about routing, but this is definitely something that would probably trip up a lot of folks unless there is some kind of exploit that we're not aware of that can be done to get, to regularly oh, get a win maybe. but yeah who knows who knows i don't know what a speed run time would be for this game i did not look it up but i'd be curious to know now i didn't look into too many specifics but i think it was about 44 minutes ish or something if i'm remembering right wow no, I, don't, I don't even know if that was the top time at all just kind of glanced around but yeah so 40 or so 40 to 50 minute speed run so i sure hope they have a manip for that casino i'm pretty sure this game took me at least eight hours <laughs> so i i'm not in the speed run realm whatsoever for this good lord hungry every once in a while there's a game that you think there's just no way that this has a really fast speed run and then you play a game like getting over it with bennett foddy and it takes you three, four days of just sheer frustration and terrible controls. And then you see that it takes somebody like a minute and a half <laughs> to get through the game. So every once in a while, you just, you don't want to know how fast the speed run is. You know? Totally, totally. And it looks now too like Skate Man has drawn into the Baccarat room as well. Things are really starting to tighten up all around. Crystals, or Chill Dragoon, I should say, sorry. Uh, still a little bit ahead of the game. But definitely, Skate Man and Crystal Saver have made up a lot of time with some convenient luck here. So let's hope that they can pull it off and make this race even tighter. Oh, we go, win. All right. And uh, speaking of winning, uh, if anybody out there in chat is interested, actually, if you'd like to be a part of this show, maybe you'd like to have your chance at winning. I will put in a command into chat right now for you. Exclamation point apply. And there you have it. If this looks like a good time, you'd like to be a part of this at all. Come on down to the hall. We'll see. Uh, there's a few different game show nights, things that go on. So love to show any interest in it. We'd love to have you. So thanks for being here as well. Uh, I'm having a great time. I hope everybody else is having a good time. Uh, it does not seem like it has been 48 minutes. I feel like it's been only 15 minutes. Time flies when you're having fun. Oh, totally. And it also flies when you have good company. And also just to build on that invitation to apply for shows here on the Speedrun Hall of Fame, you don't necessarily have to be a speedrunner. I am probably a world record slow runner at every game that I play, and I participated in the Lifeline show a couple of times ago, so it's really open to anybody that likes video games and wants to try to beat a game fast and under pressure. So anybody that's interested, please, please do not hesitate to fill out that application form. It is a wonderful time. The Speedrun Hall of Fame folks are wonderful people as well, and it's just a great way to get involved and have a lovely adventure that you've never gone on before with some very high stakes. Just kidding. This is all for fun. It's all a very nice time. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully you folks will uh, consider giving it a go. An irate Mexican. I love that. Speed meanderer. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, that's a good term. <laughs> All right, so I am seeing Skate Man uh, continuing with the Baccarat. They got the Baccarat fever. Um, 
how long are you supposed to play? Uh, does it cut you off when you win a certain amount? Or uh, what is the cue for moving on here? Or should we even say? Uh, maybe we shouldn't say. I don't know. Well, I was going to say, I think you have to. I think the cue in the game is that you have to amount or raise a lot of money. Not raise. Win a lot of money and kind of best the guy at the table in order to kind of gain his respect or gain... Uh, an audience with him, so to speak. So I don't know what the threshold is particularly, but that's part of it. So you have to win a little bit and kind of show your prowess off. But it's also very easy here to go down to zero dollars as well if you're not careful, whatever that means in this game, because it's mean to you and can take all your money in a heartbeat. But yeah, it's just you have to get a bunch of wins under your belt and then you get the go ahead to move along. And it looks like things are coming apart for Skate Man. Oh dear. And as soon as Skate Man leaves that room again, you end up in a world of trouble because you can't get back into the high roller room without your $2,500. So if you do go down to zero and you leave, you have to go back through the first gambling part to get back in here to do this part again. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, well, just seeing that, uh, so how often have they been saving? That is also a good... Uh... Yeah, uh -oh. and I, I think Skate I Man has just come to the realization that when you load your save, you go all the way back to the beginning of the area. So that was one of the hints that JSR mentioned at the beginning, where you end up respawning at the beginning and you have to walk your way back. And the casino's not too far, but it is a time loss regardless. Yeah. Now, I didn't see when they save. Let's hope that they still have their 2,500. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so they did do that much. There we go. Okay, so that's not too bad. Great utilization of the save and quit. Or save and continue, so there we go. Yeah, that was a smart move versus having to go back through the rolling of the dice at the other tables again and trying to make it back into the high roller room. Very, very wise choice. All right, and we see Mega Retro Man has machete and sugar cube fever right now, so we'll see how that plays out in a few moments. Hi, Hungry and Grunt. I have another contestant that needs some help. They're in luck because operators are standing by. All right, Chill Dragoon, you have elected to use Ask Somebody, your friend Seasonal Bard, and you will have one minute to discuss anything you want on my signal. Are you both ready? Yep. All right. Go. Okay. Um, so I need to figure out where I need to get a card to get underground, as well as the uh, way to incapacitate the guy. Uh, you won't be able to get the card because you don't have the egg from the previous stage. But what you'll do is, from if you can make it back to Q's office, you'll leave there, walk left, go up to enter the passageway, leave that passageway, the other exit, then go down, right, down, and in another passageway, then you go outside, right, left, up, left, up, and a third passageway, and you'll be able to go inside that passageway, another passageway outside of that one, and it'll take you to the black market where you need to go to do a series of fetch quests of trading animals. Uh, uh, anything okay. else? Okay, one second. Where'd my pen go? All right, the time has run out. Best of luck to you, Chill Dragoon, and I hope those hints helped out. Back to you, Gruntiatis and Hungry Gorilla. All right, so we've got a little bit of ground making up for Chill Dragoon, it would seem. Missed a couple of fetch quest related things, and that will put Chill Dragoon a little bit behind, because I know I did see at least one other player, and I can't recall who, pick up that that egg at some point so if they are past the casino with the egg in tow then they'll be all set to pull ahead i my my stomach just dropped when the last words the poor chill dragoon just said were where is that pen oh 
I know so, that my, my couch has that eaten. that steel trap memory <laughs> for those directions because I know I forgot them immediately after hearing them. Yeah, and it is one of these places, as I mentioned earlier, where it is very convoluted. There's lots of little doors and little shops to dip into along the way. And if you find the casino right away, absolutely. You bust in there, you do the thing, then you're all set. But there is quite a lot to check out in this area. And this is where I find uh, the game kind of puts up a bit of a wall, not only with the casino, but also with just the, the largeness of this area and how um, multi past it is. A lot of the other places are a little bit more linear in nature, as we'll see as we go along. So they blew the budget on the Marrakesh markets, you're saying, eh? Would seem so. Would seem so. <laughs> Uh, we have Skate have Man any... revisiting that, that nice person in the hotel lobby again there. <laughs> and Mega Retro Man is wandering around the market, staring at a bunch of rats, it would seem. <laughs> it's got cats, it's got rats, it's got a fly buzzing around. The sights are everywhere, but uh, I didn't see where that pesky egg was around. Um, wasn't really sure we were looking for one, actually. So, yeah, still lots of uh, little quests. Gotta find that. And from what you can see down the bottom left, lots of inventory space. So it looks like the... It won't just be bulletproof vests and weaponry. There's going to be quite a lot of room for various things to pick up for progression. So this will be interesting to uh, see who finds what first right now. Uh, as long as they all can get past that pesky Baccarat section. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the egg is usually buried somewhere deep inside of the black market area. If you talk to a couple of the NPCs here, they kind of allude to that being a hot item that can be found. So if people have been kind of skipping over NPC interactions, which is understandable in a race, how much reading do you really want to do when you're trying to get places? But that is a good tip off to at least look for it. Crystal Saber will look with the power of his machete <laughs> mashing around. It's still cracking me up. I'm sorry. I just, I absolutely love this. <laughs> the interactions are just flailing poor James Lynn. It's just so wildly all over the place. It's a pretty goofy thing. And if you put your block back on, you're just pretty much like uppercutting everybody instead. So there's really no good way to go about it. And any other items other than weapons or your block will just not, they'll send you to another screen or use one of them. So you're pretty, um, you're pretty stumped in terms of what you can actually do there. Looking and, uh, like John Travolta with Saturday Night Fever with that block animation. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good reference there. It looks like Crystal Saver has just run into the Cat Man, who, in, in the kind of the chain of events here, there's the Rat Man who has too many rats, there's the Cat Man who has too many cats, and so part of the goal chain here is to find a cat, but you need some food. So that's what the NPC just prompted Crystal Saver to go out and find, so looking for food to rent a cat to go get rid of some rats, and it reminds me of that terrible song about um, the woman who swallowed a horse. Do you know that one, Grunt? Did you ever sing that song about the woman who swallowed a fly and then it ends about horses? I guess she'll die. Yes. I'm wondering if that's <laughs> Canadian song base requirements. And do we want to take credit for that being a Canadian song? I don't know. I would say probably not. I'm, I'm happier yeah, I'm... to think about the log driver's waltz instead. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And just curious to see, so it looks like Mega Retro Man has gone through the black market first. Has he been to the casino yet? Do we recall if he's been out that way? I've been kind of glancing. I don't remember seeing any uh, casino games being played down there, so not. The, uh, the largeness of this section has maybe been in favor because they'll kind of get a few of the 
necessary items and then do uh, everybody's favorite gambling and going back and to the teller and then gambling and then going back to the teller it seems like the the hot thing to do on this fine evening on the saturday so it looks like skateman is still also looking for the next little bit of information to keep pushing forward there. Chill Dragoon is running through the black market. I don't know if he got the egg or what's going on there, but certainly I'll be curious to see the inventory when it pops up again. All right, a Mega Retro Man did just trade in the new identity card for the night vision goggles down there very handy item it's it's always nice when you walk into somewhere in this game and it's pitch black <laughs> and you, you just kind of see your own little figure in there and it's like oh i guess i'm not supposed to be here yet the game is pretty good at guiding you about when you've gone to somewhere that you're not meant to be and that's always a good benefit too in these types of scenarios where you don't necessarily want to be wandering around in the wrong direction for too long the game will usually turn you around by your head and send you back to go and look for something uh, linear when it needs to be. I like that, at least. Uh, so you're not just aimlessly wandering the whole time. Yeah, it definitely does help to streamline the experience a little bit. But I would say this is probably one of the largest and most convoluted sections in terms of having a multifaceted requirement in terms of the casino and the, and the trading quest to be able to move on. Seems like Chill Dragoon is very kindly letting most enemies keep their lives as well. Hasn't really been um, destroying anybody lately. Just trying to rush through and rightfully so, trying to get some of those good hints and be able to move on. Well, they might be concerned about uh, their dental health with all the sugar cubes that it drops, you know? I mean, you don't want to have that much sugar going all the time. Okay, totally. they're moving. Yeah, they are definitely, I guess, happy with the health amount. They're not trying to see if they get any health drops. Oh, that looks like a hallway. Oh, dear. Yeah, so this is where the difficulty really starts to kick up. So you'll have multiple enemies, all with projectiles. And the AI in this game either seems to be really smart or really dumb. They'll sometimes gang up on you and chase you around. Other times they'll just let you... Uh, destroy them by kind of being semi-hidden, like taking a little bit of cover. It's very funny how things can either come right apart or you've got some really good luck on your side from time to time as well. But they're definitely getting to the part where, um, in terms of the catacomb searching, where things really do ramp up in terms of the enemies having a little bit of an advantage on you finally. At least you can use some of the charm and jank of the Game Boy as you're seeing Mega Retro Man just kind of being slightly down and to the right of the sprite of the enemies too. So conserving ammo, using that machete, and not in the line of fire at the same time. So uh, maybe just a proper uh, layout for an area could give you that opportunity to do a little farming and then, yeah, maybe adopt that. Just try to keep on running past where you can, but... Poor Jill, uh, Chill Dragoon is just completely getting blocked in all of these hallways, it seems. But they are neck and neck right now. And a sugar cube full of health for Mega Retro Man. Yeah, I'm looking at Mega Retro Man's health bar and nodding. Like, good for him because it's so easy to get whittled down here. And I don't know, has anybody died yet? I don't know that I've seen anybody kind of keel over and die. But the death animation for Bond is pretty funny. Well, now I don't want to root for it, but now I'm kind of rooting for it to happen. Uh, I don't believe so. I haven't seen it, at least, if it has. Yeah, and that just goes to show how talented all of our runners are this evening, making it an entire hour into a game none of them have... Mm, okay, we got protective glass. An interesting choice to block off an entrance way. I would have thought those were steel bars or something, but protective glass blocking the way down to the left for poor Chill Dragoon. Let's see.
And quick work of the rust on this. All right, so they got the hint busting on through. And Mega Retro Man getting some of them sugar cubes. Oh, wow, and that one hit, whatever just hit, really knocked down the health bar right there. That was scary. Yeah, it, there's definitely a lot of risk in this section, no doubt. It looks like Chill Dragoon has just found his way to a very interesting place where there are lots of wonderful people ready to welcome the person into the spa. Ah, uh, to be as carefree as those NPCs, just lounging around the middle of the floor, just enjoying the day, you know? All right, shiny diamond acquired for Chill Dragoon. I'm assuming it's a diamond. It is a diamond. Thank you for confirming that, Chill Dragoon. Yeah, and what is a little troublesome there is after you go and visit the room full of ladies, you get bumped back out of the catacombs. So I wasn't really clear when I played this about whether or not that was a necessity to do. It probably is part of the the game's progression, but it does put you out quite a way. And then you're thinking, oh no, I have to go all the way back through this convoluted way to get back through the catacombs, go eat a bunch of bullets again, and then still figure out what the task at hand is. Oh, cause yeah, the other gate is there, isn't it? Oh yes, there's lots to do here. Just when you think you're home free and out of Marrakesh, they pull you right back in. Yeah, there is no easy way out of this section. Hmm. Okay, we see Skate Man kind of just stopping and pausing for a second, maybe checking notes. Where have they been? They're looking on the locator. Yeah, good idea. Get your bearings, because, yeah, this area is larger than even what I remembered when seeing a bit of this game. Yeah, and right now, it's very hard to tell who's in the lead. It kind of seems like everybody's come about to the same stumbling blocks. So I haven't been able to quite keep track of who has all the items and where people are in their fetch quests. But right now, it's a pretty tight game here. Anybody yeah. could pull ahead at any moment. Just keep that machete swinging at any and every opportunity. <laughs> maybe you find a health pack, maybe you find a required item. Uh, weird looking spot in the screen looks slightly different. See, I'm loving the uh, the angles approach. Got Crystal Saver making short work and getting rewarded. Like a good horse with some good sugar cubes. Moving on to the next screen to see what's there. It's definitely very tricky. Some of the combat is hard because Bond almost has a handedness when you're coming in from up or down in a screen. So depending on where you're entering from, if you've got enemies on the side of your body where you don't have a weapon swing, then it does make it a little bit more difficult to get some hits in. Yeah, and that was a good decision on Saver's part. As soon as you were mentioning that, he went straight to the shoot straight and right down the middle instead of swinging on the right side. So we'll see how that plays out in a moment. Hello, Hungry. Hello, Grunt. We have yet another contestant who would like a hint. All right, is that so, JSL? Well, they're in luck because operators are standing by. All right, Skate Man, you've elected to ask somebody, and I welcome to the stream 2C Plus your help today. Uh, when I say go, you both will have one minute to discuss and ask any questions you'd like. Are you both ready? Yep. Yep. All right, go. All right, give me the lowdown. <laughs> okay, what do I so do? For the, for the trade sequence, uh, you're going to try to find a guy with a lot of chickens in the black market. Okay. That guy is going to give you a chicken, and uh, you're going to give it to the guy with the cats. Okay. Then he's going to give you a pearl, which you're going to give it to a guy that has 10 deals off. And uh, that pearl will give you a pass. Somewhere in the south, there's another guy that gives you ghouls, 
with that pass and then with mm -hmm. those googles you're gonna go to the cave that is somewhere in the north of the black market okay cool um before you go to the black market you should find q's lab uh it's gonna give you like some kind of watch to use in the caves there's like some metallic door mm, okay like in the city yeah. uh yeah it's uh somewhere on the left of the hotel that's like hotel. some uh, okay some kind of access uh, i think you need to find some oh with with the pass maybe all right your time is up thank you so much to see and skate man good luck with those hints back to you hg and grunt what an excellent use of ask somebody some really solid hints there for skate man and hopefully that will help them get their bearings and get on their way here making some very good progress yeah those were really well laid out excellent uh, location kind of guidance the knowledge of the whole trade sequence yeah i think that's a huge advantage right now that should really speed up what's going on good use yeah, and just as a reminder, everybody, there are a bunch of different hints that can come around. Nobody has chosen to use that lifeline yet, which would be... I don't know if it would be the best time to use it now, but if anybody is stuck, it would be a pretty beneficial thing to just get that one really direct push in order to really start moving in the correct direction. But I'm glad to see some people using their hints and some great partners as well here dishing out all of the goods yeah it's got to be tricky to know when you feel like it's a good time to use it but i think at this point they've wandered around and seen enough of this marketplace to know oh boy this this has a lot going on so yeah everybody uh choosing good timing i would say all around you now they kind of have their bearings know which doors are kind of going where we're going to see who makes the best use of it. Yeah, and I'm curious to see when Mega Retro Man is going to arrive in the casino. Because I don't think I've seen him go there yet, unless I'm mistaken. I'm thinking you're right, though. <laughs> I'm not remembering that either. Um, maybe chat remembers if uh, have they seen the casino... Because I do not. I love that dog sprite, by the way, just watching Mega Retro Man walk by the dog. Nobody wants to pet him. Oh, well, there we go. We have now seen the casino. We spoke too soon. There we go. So let's see how Mega Retro Man's luck goes here once he figures out what needs to be done. And we still have some others battling bravely in the catacombs, doing their very best to get through the non-stop onslaught of enemies that just respawn. Some of them respawn after you walk away too far. It pulls some Zelda 1 nonsense on you. Or if you walk too many rooms away, they pop back up again. And the bartender delivering the classic line. And also... I would like to point out that in the bottom left corner area, we did see Mega Retro Man tell us how Baccarat is played. So it looks like you want to get closest to nine in the fewest amount of cards, two cards ideally. So that's what's going on. That's good Does to that know. help anybody, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, at least now I know what I'm looking at when those cards are flipping around. Yeah, totally. And let's see how he's going to approach it. Is he going to go all in? Is he going to go little bets? Looks like he's going to try the little bet first or try a different table. He's had enough of that one. Off he goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I guess we're going to see what red dog is. Nope. <laughs> no red dog. A very narrow squeeze between the tables. There we go. Going to blackjack. We just saw Chill Dragoon take out the man with the fez i forget who that character is but the fellow at the baccarat table found the secret passage behind loaded that poor man full of tranquilizers and now is getting to the point where they might be wrapping up this section if they found the egg and they're on their way to the next section of the game i have uh, haven't noticed been kind of glancing around i'm not sure about the egg 
portion, but uh, yeah, really cool to see that. The save and quit. The roaming around the market. But here we go. I'm just drawn to Blackjack because I know this can just be such a long, drawn-out part. I'm rooting for you, Mega, Metro, Mega Retro Man. Please just win. Yeah, I think we can all send our good vibes. Hopefully the tables do not look sadly upon Mega Retro Man this evening. Okay, they're kind of roaming around and now leaving the casino, though. Okay. So we'll see what's up with that. Maybe they just have something else on their mind or see how that's going. Skate man. And Chill Dragoon going to make sure that the tranquilizer victim is sound asleep here before heading back to continue the quest. It, it kind of ends a little bit open here and you think, oh, I've completed the mission. What exactly do I have to do now? They got odd jobs key. That's right. Yeah. So part of the whole story for this section is that there's a room in the same hotel that you're staying where odd job is apparently staying as well or someone that he knows. So you're trying to get the key to get in there and looks like we're oh, just no. about to enter. Da -na -na -na. And I found it very funny that odd jobs thing is hats. It's kind of a weird, a weird thing as someone who'd just never seen that weapon choice before. Um, a hat attack seems very funny. And <laughs> looks looks like Chill Dragoon has headed out to the next area of the game, which is oh. the Sahara. Or did they? I don't know if you just saw what happened. Okay, I think they just try to quit without saving. But they're at the, but they're there. So I don't know. Did they not just choose quit without saving? I'm I was a little really nervous sure. here. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little nervous on what was going to happen there. Uh, but now we see an interesting moment. Um, strolling through the desert and... Na -na 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 -na. <laughs> there is that keel over holding your guts in animation <laughs> I was talking about a while yeah. ago. So very similar if you folks have ever played King's Quest V and explored the desert there. There's a lot of heat to get you here. And that little, um, the orienting device that some folks have been checking out, I forget what that would be called, but like the coordinate display that you've seen some people use is very helpful here. Okay, so yeah, they hit up, they talk to a man on a camel. They have uh, filled the canteen. But that health bar, <laughs> this, that is dangerously low. Oh, yes. And part of this whole section is figuring out where to go. So it's not a very large desert, but you'll see with every screen transition, one drink is taken out of that canteen. It must be very hot there. <laughs> so yeah. it's trying to get a feel for where to go. And another keel over and da -na -da -na. Yeah, I took a lot of deaths here as well, as I'm sure anybody who's played this game can probably attest to. I'm surprised that the, uh, I can't think of what that device is called. I'm surprised that they haven't checked that out yet. And the rest of our players still perusing the market. We've got Crystal Saver talking to, is that Miss Bliss, maybe? Seems to be. Getting kicked back out into the market and wondering what just happened? Yeah, and then trying to figure out what to do next. I see, I could just see a little James Bond's face going, huh? <laughs> Why am I here now? What happened? Whoa, getting chased by a little scorpion over there. Good moves from Chill Dragoon. And another scorpion as your reward. Got Mega Retro Man working the angles beautifully in the dark cavern. Skate Man finding out about the Rat Man again. Talking to the same people, maybe wondering if they missed any clue as to where they're supposed to be going. 
or what uh, what the next sequence part is. Oh, dan it, dan it. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Those scorpions are ruthless. You move oh, pretty yeah. quick in this game, but the scorpions are faster. It's kind of terrible because when you arrive here, usually you've just come from a pretty terrible adventure, right? You're doing your best to not to die constantly. But I wonder if Chill Dragoon has any med kits that could help. Yeah, and you had mentioned that earlier where we hadn't seen any of the death animation. Everyone doing so good. And then, yeah, you were just dropped right into <laughs> a terrible predicament here. Yeah, this desert's alternative name is Death City. I'm just kidding, I made that up, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> well, now I'm just singing uh, Paradise City with Scorpion City as the, the lyrics in my head, so. I know I'm supposed to be the one who sings out of the two of us, but I'll spare everybody from hearing my... Uh, my weird owl version of uh, Paradise City by Guns N' Roses. I, for one, would like to hear it, but I, of course, understand. We don't want to be crossing any copyright law problems. Oh, it, yeah, it's it's only because of DMCA. Otherwise, uh, you'd it'd totally be hearing it, yeah. But, ah, that pesky DMCA. Not today. Ooh, that scorpion was right on <laughs> Jill Dragon's tail. And back into the same spot. So I think they're finding out that it, as you mentioned, looks like a pretty small map area. Uh, they kind of can just keep walking in the same direction, and it looks like it's looped around. Unless that's a different spot. Uh, I doubt it. It looks like that's the same person on the camel. So, okay. So, looks like they're trying... Just a few different alternatives, up and right. Don't know what that is. Is it anything other than a landmark and a pesky? <laughs> da -na -da -na. Down again. Poor Bond. Yeah, poor guy. Eh? He didn't sign up for this, I don't feel. But there it is. And it looks like... Crystal Saver has returned to the hotel. I think Crystal Saver also made great work of the fellow with the fez as well and is just about to stumble into Odd Job's room as well. So should be heading off to the desert shortly. So definitely coming up again to... Or wait, it's locked. Maybe Crystal Saver does not have the key. Doesn't seem so. Never mind. Hmm. All right, and uh, just a little quick info about the game itself as well, since we had uh, just mentioned we weren't sure which it was. Uh, so we don't keep calling them Hats McGee for the rest of the night here, though maybe I will anyways. But uh, looks like this story is completely original for this game. Uh, it does include a few of the familiar characters of the series. Uh, we got 007, M, Q, and Money Penny on the good guys, and for the bad guys as Jaws and Odd Job. So I think Hats McGee is Odd Job? Question mark? I think the guy that throws all of his hats is Odd Job, yeah. I believe so. But then there's that other fellow in the Baccarat room who's got the fizz. So there's two hat guys. Oh, jeez. <laughs> One couldn't be a shoe guy, you know? And Chill Dragoon there just taking a little stop in the desert to stare at the audience or the camera of the game in disdain. Where do I go? What is this desert? What is life? I wonder if they're making a map at this point because it looks like uh, they stopped when they found the other rock sequence. Sequence. Uh, the rock screen. So maybe they're plotting something out or they're just remembering the path that they were on. But yeah, nothing uh, Nothing looking any really 
different than the last screen right now for them, so we'll have to see. Well, they did find another oasis, though. Or is it the same oasis? <laughs> I, I think know. it's I think it's a different one. So if you take a look at Skate Man's screen right now, too, that device is the um, the dimensions of the desert. So it's not a very large place, but you do have to try to figure out where the oases are and make sure that you get there, refill that canteen before you succumb to mm -hmm. the elements here. Yeah, and I don't believe we've seen Dragoon uh, that locator into action here either, so... No, definitely not. And as you might expect too, you do loop around. If you move too far into one direction, you do come back around the same way. Yeah, okay, yeah. We're seeing the man on the camel. And they're going to try down this time into a scorpion hug. That skull that they just walked by, very, uh, very discouraging. I would say walking by a skull in the desert as you are meandering doesn't feel like a very positive thing. All right, good scorpion jukes there. And then, yeah, we're seeing a few others still trying to make their way out of the larger part of the uh, Marrakesh market, but... Mega Retro Man kind of uh, stuck in a small alleyway. But they're not shooting, so that's good. Sugar cube with a bullet inside. You hate to see it. What a disappointing center to a sugar cube, right? <laughs> it's like that, right. uh, how many licks to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Well, thank goodness that's not the center, right? Yeah, no kidding. I'll be curious to see, because I didn't honestly expect the desert section to be the Great Equalizer the second, like the casino has been. But it'll be interesting to see when everybody else arrives, if they'll have some better luck navigating here. Because it seems like Skate Man is at least onto the idea of the navigating device. If Chill Dragoon has it, I would be curious to see what they might think if they busted that out. I can't tell you how many times in a video game I have picked up an item and then never looked at it and needed to. <laughs> so it's not always the most intuitive thing to do. I'm watching this game and just knowing I would be horrible at it uh, because I'm an item hoarder. Uh, you do not want to see my Fallout 4 save files. I probably have a thousand guns. Just wait. I might need to sell them at some point. You know, I'm back and forth from dungeons, just keeping everything. And the thought of using something, especially in JRPGs, like, ah, I don't want to use those elixirs yet, even though you're at the final boss. Like, maybe there's a seventh form. I don't know about yet. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be weary about using a lot of stuff in this. Well, I think, too, I keep a lot of stuff for after the final boss, for the after party, right? You need to be able to serve something at that party. So I totally hear you on the elixir yeah. front. But the other part about this game is some stuff is limited and you don't know what's limited until you try to use it and then it's gone forever <laughs> and then you have regrets. You're like, oh, should have, maybe I have kept that for another time? Especially in a race scenario, you don't really know what to expect and what's coming up next. And in a game like this where it just changes modes so often and places that you're going and the difficulties all over the place, it's very hard to know how to approach some of these problems. But we see here Chill Dragoon just actually found the place and is off to Tibet. So finally got somewhere where the sun hopefully doesn't shine nearly as hot as that horrible desert. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to see it. Yeah, and this area obviously looks just like China again. Same buildings, same assets here. Looks like we're right back where we started, but it is in fact a different place here. And going to do some thorough exploration vertically in this section, so it should be very fun. Good to chop everything. I am really loving that we are seeing the uh, Saturday Night Fever options being selected with the punch in the block. The machete is uh, looking like it's a super useful item, but uh, the animation just doesn't do it for me like that. <laughs> like that disco dance that's going on the bottom right right now. Somebody very much needs to put that animation to some music. 
And looks like uh, Mega Retro Man has made his way into the high roller room, has crossed the $3,000 threshold, and has busted on out of there. Where he's off to, I guess we'll see. All right, I'm finding more out about Baccarat, <laughs> which, you know, that's good. But where is the next moment to go? Oh, boy, and we see Skate Man in that uh, horrible hallway. Yeah, that's that's so rough that as soon as they turn, their gun is on the right hand side too. So you really got to watch where your pixels are lining up, because that yep. bullet hits hard. It does hit hard, and while there are a lot of health packs to find just lying around, Skate Man just picked up two of them in this little area at the end of the hallway. They don't respawn until you die or you leave, so you really have to make the most out of your health bar and whatever med kits you happen to have tucked away in that inventory. And that one's just cruel because the only reason you're even at that health bar, you had to go through that horrible hallway in the first place. So it's kind of a slap in the face because he's going to have to go through the horrible hallway again. Oh, yes. You really get health out of that? We'll... Oh, yeah, that guy's firing super fast. Well, only took one hit, but I guess came out one med kit ahead. Yeah, it seems like making some good progress there. And, you know, even if you have a good idea of, oh, gosh, I shouldn't go down this terrible hallway again, after you go do 10 other things and you come back, you're like, oh, what's down this terrible hallway? Like, you'll go down that hallway 15 times trying to figure out where to go because you have to backtrack so much in this section. Yeah. And we're seeing some uh, grenade throws. That took a big chunk of health out of poor Chill Dragoon down there, so... Yeah, the grenade throwers are first introduced in this section, but I think what's beneficial is that you can also get your hands on grenades as well. But you're right, though. They okay. do take quite a lot of health away and are relentless. And it doesn't help that Chill Dragoon has busted into this area with such a little health in the health bar. It's terrible to start out with. And throwing first and asking questions later with those grenades, putting them to use just in case, because, like, say... Low health, may as well use them now, just in case. Yeah, and I feel like grenades are pretty hard to come by, too. They don't exactly rain as other things do sometimes. You get a lot of the other ammo. I think you can't even hold more than nine of them. I think maybe. I might be misremembering, but you cannot hear, hold nearly as many as other types of ammunition. Oh, trying to use the grenades on the grenadier, but... Uh... Once they're hunkered down in that bunker, it's just not happening, it seems. So, unfortunately, finding out after using two grenades and getting pinned in that corner, but a little bit of health to escape out of that scary section. Yeah, rewatching Chill going through some of these spots is reminding me of all of the turmoil <laughs> of this particular area that you just end up in here. I got distracted by the the charming dance animation, the crystal saver was just in that other room. It's like a belly dancer animation. Yeah, it's the wiggly hips person, eh? Yeah, <laughs> that was the one. Yeah, and I saw a question in chat about if anybody's figured out how the armor works. There's very much um, a benefit to the armor, but there's different different types so some of them are a little bit more resistant than others and i think some of them will make you invincible until they wear out so if you get hit by stuff you have three hits or five hits or whatever until they're gone so they're more of a use with caution and only when necessary kind of scenario there but like holding on to any good item when is it necessary is it a final boss item do i want to use it during this uh crowded hallway or yeah so when who will use their items sparingly and who's going to use them properly that's how this is going to play out for these narrow hallways right now i agree and i think you and i are kindred spirits in the keep everything as long as possible club oh it, I'm, I'm still not sure even after watching somebody beat this game if i should have <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, and it seems like, oh cool, it looks like Skateman did pick up the marble earlier in the game. So that's great to see. And that is an item that its purpose will eventually come to light. I don't know if I will say too much. It's in the notes. I wonder if I should probably hang on to that for a moment. Maybe we'll hang on to that one. All right. <laughs> and just winging the machetes furiously on everybody's screen who's got a machete going right now. I do find it very funny to watch. I don't know if it's in frustration, if it's a perseverance display, <laughs> or what what it really boils down to, but it looks like the folks that are still exploring the catacombs are really giving it their all in terms of the combat. And it looks like Chill Dragoon is ascending, which is good because in this particular area, you're trying to reach the top of this mountain and it's very difficult. And he's just about to go by the man who looks like a snake. <laughs> it's like a head on top of a bunch of snakes, at least to my mind, but... Yeah, onwards and upwards here on great pace, well ahead of the others for the moment. I do remember seeing a couple interesting sprites. I'll, uh, I'll wait until they're appearing as well. But yeah, they uh, did have some charming characters. But okay, now we got uh, exploration. Looks like they found uh, Chill Dragoon is finding grenades and health packs and all kinds of things by searching every nook and cranny in this area. And that looks like a new weapon right there. You bet, and how effective it is. So we'll see if that gets put to good use in the coming screens in this coming section as well. Definitely worth using that one. I think it shoots multiple bullets, which is very helpful. Oh, like a semi-automatic kind of style. Okay, well, that's good because, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, if uh, if a punch is worth a single bullet, then <laughs> I guess that's where it gains its power from. Yes, and I am nodding away as you're talking there. And it's, it's kind of neat, and if you folks have maybe not paid very close attention, what you'll see with every subsequent area is an escalation in difficulty. So right now, for example, uh, Crystal Saver is in the catacombs in the previous area. People have guns that shoot one bullet. You'll see that Chill Dragoon is now running into um, grenade launching folks, as well as people with automatic or semi-automatic weapons, and that will continue to become harder and harder as the game progresses. So very interesting to see the pacing of this. It's it's pretty reasonable, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good pacing. And yeah, you had uh, mentioned earlier how some sections seem a little bit more linear and as you go. Um, yeah, this, this looks very straightforward in comparison to what everybody else is still trying to map out and figure out. And Chill Dragoon is just, oh, okay, do this, go there, grab this, move on. That's got to feel like an amazing relief after all of that last section. So I'm sure everybody's going to look forward to getting to experience that as well. Yeah, definitely. It's a good sigh of relief by the time you get to this next area. Like you say, a lot more linear, a lot less convoluted. I know that that's the same thing in two different ways, but it is just such a nice break from the brain bender that is Marrakech. And we see Mega Retro Man just put a tranquilizer into the Fez wearing Baccarat table fellow whose name I'm still not aware of and is on his way, hopefully, to find the key to Odd Job's room. We could call him Fezzy McGee. We could. <laughs> As you can see, I'm amazing at coming up with nicknames. I am probably way worse. When I was young and played Adventure Island 2, I named the red and blue dinosaurs Reddy and Bluey. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're ahead of the game. We got the saver in the lab. Try to bring everything back in one piece. I think that's a classic line as well. I feel like I've heard that one said. 
someone can correct me on that. Maybe, uh, maybe it's not. But. Yeah, and this would be a great time, I think, for folks to use one of their hints if they are stuck in Marrakech and ever want to see the lands beyond. It would be a great time to use one of those hints. And a lot of people still do have quite a lot of them left. Crystal Saver has not used any, Mega Retro Man hasn't used any, and Skate Man and Chill Dragoon have only used two and one, respectively. So still lots of hinting available. Hopefully these folks will take advantage of it if it's needed. But what if you need it after the final boss? Maybe they're hoarding their lifelines like we would hoard items in a game like that. When to use them? I can speak from my own personal experience when I participated as a contestant a couple of months ago and I hoarded all of my lifelines and all of my hits. <laughs> I used, I think I used one of them the whole time. I, I came in second, but I still, I hung on to them. I'm like, I, I don't need hints. I'm fine. I could make it. <laughs> no, humility. There's no good place for humility in this particular place. All right. Folks, I've got another contestant that needs a hand. Sounds good, JSM. They're in luck because operators are standing by. All right. Crystal Saver, you've elected to use your 50-50 hint. Uh, when you're ready, go ahead and ask your question. We'll give you two answers to use. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. What's your question? My question is, what do I do with this diamond to get the Tranquil Gun? All right. First answer option. You're going to go back to the casino, win $25,000 on any ch game of your choice. You will receive a high roller suite key. Go into the high roller suite and there will be a gentleman inside that will trade you the diamond for a tranquilizer gun. Option number two, go back into the catacombs. Once inside the catacombs, you're going to go down, left, down, left, down, right, 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 down, left, left, left. There you'll find a man you're going to trade the diamond for a tranquilizer gun. The choice is yours on which option you will take. I wish you the best of luck. And back to you, Gruntiatis, Hungry Guria. All right. Well, let's see if that is a helpful set of hints. Yeah, 50-50. What do you believe? What do you do? Did they have a notepad ready? It's got to be. It's got to be an interesting feeling. It's uh, you know, you're trying to gain time. You're trying to juggle all the information that's there. It's uh, it's a lot on your plate. And there. Oh, I just saw on Chill Dragoon's screen. What a lovely, lovely sprite that is. It was only there for a second, but if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. Indeed. And it looks like Chill Dragoon has the grappling hook, meaning that they now have access to the upper portion of this section. So good job, because it looks like we're coming up to the end of another area. And Chill Dragoon about to break into this new little building on top. So if you folks missed it, Chill Dragoon has been asked to leave all of the equipment at the door to face a trial, which should be pretty fun. You know oh, what's I coming. Love this <laughs> it's it's very funny. <laughs> Just so good. I don't know what they're dancing to, but I, I wanna hear it. I want in on it as well. And you'll see too that this is kind of looping back around to the advice that was given in the first area of the game in China, which is block first and then you'll have an opening to attack. So looks like Chill Dragoon is not losing very much health. It's very hard to see there, but it looks like the block and attack is working out quite nicely. And gaining a little bit of information, I think, from just doing that quick little loop on uh, the order of events there, so... It's just, what an animation. 
Looks like Mega Retro Man just checked in on the Tranked Fez, Fezzy McGee, we decided we would call him, and is on the way back to the hotel probably now. It's canon now, yeah. And let's see how Mega Retro Man fares in the next section here. I'm gonna check all the doors <laughs> on the way. Um, a little bit obsessed with this first door, which is also locked, but as we saw in Chill Dragoon's session, it's the last door in the hallway that needs to be interacted with, with the key, in order to get in. Oh, baby, what a winning streak I'm seeing up on top of Saber there. That was like six wins in a row, quick loss, two in a row, one loss. One win. It's, I, I got the fever. <laughs> Saber is just crushing it up there. Yeah, wisely saving with the money. Okay. So taking the 50-50, going with the 25k option. Chill Dragoon dancing with the stars down there. And we have got Hattie McGee, not Fezzy McGee. Just flinging hats around. Where is Skate Man in the the mix of all this? They, uh, I believe, they've done the uh, the tranquilizer. So everything should be uh, should be evening up very soon. Yeah, we'll have multiple folks heading into the next section all at the same time. Chill Dragoon still ahead, but others catching up. All right, and finding the rhythm right now. So there we go for Chill Dragoon. And here we go for <laughs> Mega Retro Man. I think we're we're going to experience more than one. But going up first, so there we go. That was something that Chill Dragoon did not. So immediately getting that helpful item. And just remembering to seeing the hint that's given, it tells you your current coordinates and then the coordinates you need to get to. So anybody that had tried out that navigation device might think to check it at this point to see where you need to travel to. Harsh but fair, you know? <laughs> da -da -da -da. He went to get ready for the montage of <laughs> Healing Over Dead in the Desert, Part 2. I've been waiting. And looks like Chill Dragoon's reward for a good climb is a lot of guns in his face. So, off to the secret base. I'm not trying to uh, make a rhyme, but it just kind of worked out there. Accidental rhyming is the perfect recipe when hosting a show. So there you go. Hey, look at you go. I'm doing my best. <laughs> We've got a question in chat about why did Mega Retro Man die? And that is the desert heat. That's right. So the canteen that was just received from the Camel Man can be filled at the Oasis. And then you can transition screens several times before dying. So if you don't do that and your health bar runs out, then you're toast. Figuratively and apparently literally as well. There we go. So they just filled up for six drinks, so they get six screens of... I wouldn't exactly call it worry-free wandering, but um, here we go. Oh, I think they're trying to use the canteen now, but maybe they see that it's being used. So there we go. It's a neat little section. I like that. I like the, the gimmick of that. Narrowly missing two scorpion attacks. How lucky. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> And da -da -da -da. and as poor Reg uh, Mega Retro Man is dying horrible deaths repeatedly, Chill Dragoon is searching the secret base, has busted out of jail, and is wandering around looking for weapons, firing point blank, trying to get past some of these extra, extra difficult encounters. Because when you head into this section of the game, you lose most of your items here and you're stuck building up your inventory again from scratch. And we 
still have Skate Man and Crystal Saver wandering the catacombs and the streets of Marrakech. Hopefully going to make a break for it soon into the desert heat as well uh, to repeatedly keel over. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing a comment in chat where uh, only level one live saying it's incredible to me that this game fit on a Game Boy cart. And uh, yeah, on that note, uh, more of an adventure game than anything. Uh, James Bond 007 shares some major design features with other popular titles on the Game Boy. Uh, players will not only need to push through the narrative by completing objectives, but also will need to complete various tools and weapons to complete their mission. The game's story has elements from a lot of James Bond movies, some quotes directly linked lifted from the classic films, uh, example from Goldeneye, beg your pardon, forgot to knock. And, Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. So we have so many moments other than shaken, not stirred to look forward to as well, but yeah, I mean, level design, sprite design kooky dancing designs. Uh, it has it all so far. I'm really loving it. Hello! Oh, hi. Hi, we have a contestant that needs a hand. Well, operators are standing by. All right, Skate Man, you've elected to use the lifeline. Your lifeline isn't coming, and as soon as you hear the other hosts again after we're done, you must put your controller down with no inputs for two minutes or the clock restarts. You may pause the game, but nothing else. Everything okay. good to go? You ready? Yep. All right, what is your question? All right, my question is, what are the two viable things and how do I get them for the rat man and the guy in one of the buildings in the town? Okay, so right now you have uh, the, what is that item you have? Is that the pearl or the marble? A marble, yeah. Okay, so have you card? You've already gotten the diamond. You already gotten the uh, tranquilizer gun. Um, have you Wait, already gotten odd jobs keys? I don't think I have tranquilizer. I have a pistol. Okay, uh, so if you don't have the tranquilizer gun, you should have the diamond. You don't have the diamond yet. So no. Have you gotten the night goggles and gone through the catacombs yet? I do have the goggles, and I went through the catacombs up to the rat man, but I couldn't figure out what to give him. Oh, I know what you need. Okay, you need to find cues base q's base is yeah i was trying to find that it was like west of hotel was from my other lifeline but i couldn't find it so from the casino walk right down right into the underground passageway follow it all the way to the path then go in the left hallway once you get outside the underground passageway you're going to walk right down right and inside the q branch office q will give you a laser watch that laser watch will open up the doors in the catacombs. One of those doors contains Miss Priss, or Miss Bliss, I'm sorry. Miss Bliss has a diamond, which will lead you back to the catacombs that'll get you that tranquilizer gun. The other door is, I think, just bonus stuff, but be warned, once you enter Miss Bliss's chambers, she dumps you back out on the street. So don't accidentally go in there unless you uh, go in there to get the diamond and then don't go back in there. Uh, uh, okay. Unless you're trying to get, like, a shortcut but um yeah you need to get that tranquilizer gun then go in that other door in the catacombs and you can shoot through that peephole that you'll see you'll see the people you shoot fez through that peephole then go all the way back to the casino and pick the keys up those keys will take you to the next area in the hotel got it okay thank you very much <laughs> you, you got it that's a lot i know are you ready yeah, I, I think I wrote down everything. Uh, well, okay, can I, like, just maybe run through that again? or uh, yeah. like? okay, I'll give you the... So, uh, so um, first things first, like, you want to find Q. So, from... So, right down right from Casino, there's an underground, yeah. another right down right. Yeah, once you exit, you go right down right, then you'll find Q Branch. Then after you, you get Q Branch, uh, yeah. you're going to want to go back into the catacombs. Yeah. Um, and you're going to follow it until you... Did you see those two jail doors? I didn't find the doors. I did find the rat man, though. Okay, it's near the rat man, but I, I think it's past that. The rat man is who you're going to give the diamond to to get the uh, tranquilizer gun. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Got it. You okay, good to go? I'll try to look for jail doors. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. So I just hold right, off um, now. Yeah, just pause the game and take a two-minute break. We'll let you know when you're good to go. 
Okay, and thank you. Thank you so much. And back to you, Hungry Gorilla and Gruntiatus. All right, so a very clever use of the lifeline. Finally, hopefully going to get out of Marrakech. Yeah, they did uh, a lot of good digging around, and there is uh, there's just so much to try find. That no doubt, a little frustrating at times, but uh, it it just goes back to what was said earlier, just how much they did actually pack into this. And even though they're kind of backtracking through similar hallways, it doesn't really feel like that. Like just even watching it casually doesn't seem it's like oh god i gotta walk back through this again like doesn't feel like it was just phoned in looks uh, looks all pretty well designed all around here I'm, I'm really enjoying this game yeah it's definitely an enjoyable experience even if it seems like it's a little stumbly in the middle here it's certainly well worth a play even just casually for folks and it also looks like crystal saber has just arrived in the Sahara and is about to get the mission brief and then hopefully we have keel over and have a bad time part three. I'm just kidding. I hope that Crystal Saber has good luck. <laughs> well, you, you don't want to hear me sing. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, that's the best rendition of the Bond theme I've personally heard all night. It's very wise to put in all night. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see so narrowly escaping scorpions but plenty of them to find <laughs> one more victim to the Sahara sun <laughs> one more person turned to crisp but we'll also see two in uh, chill dragoons playthrough right now running into enemies right now that have rocket launchers so the introduction of those terrible weapons which completely tear down your health bar we're seeing a lot of dinner dinner there as well yeah chill dragoon taking that death somewheres that wasn't the sahara so there we go we're we're seeing that slow difficulty spike as you had mentioned before coming to fruition so Time's gonna tell just how difficult this area is gonna be. Yep. And in terms of who's ahead right now, I've seen a question in chat asking. Chill Dragoon is in the lead, but we have Crystal Saver and Mega Retro Man not too far behind, with Skate Man definitely making some good progress to get out of Marrakech, but isn't really too far behind all said and done. Uh, these areas that come after Marrakech, as we've seen, are quite linear. It would be pretty easy to catch up in a timely fashion if people hurry. And of course, if Chill Dragoon keeps taking rockets to the face, we may see some other people pull up in the rear pretty quick. Just really looking forward to the, uh, the sumo section here again. It's so funny. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. You're just randomly taking an ascent up a mountain and then you fight a bunch of sumo folks and then you're off to the next place. So a lot of random stuff. And again, not having seen any James Bond, James Bond films, not entirely sure if that's in the true vein of the series, but it certainly seems fitting for a fun spy on an adventure. An international one at that. Well, as you can see, uh, to fill you in, just since you don't know much about the lore, uh, even though a British spy, apparently James Bond is also Captain America, as you'll see in Jill Chill Dragoon's screen right now, uh, just rocking the, the shield. So there you go. International Man of Mystery indeed. The shield is a game changer in this game. It blocks most projectiles. I say most because it can't block a rocket, but it can definitely block most things that will come the player's way. And I found when I picked it up, it was finally the little bit of a piece that I needed to start making some headway again after getting absolutely wrecked. As we've seen Chill Dragoon as well, getting smoked left and right. Well, these hallways are horrible. I mean, that's three in a row with three 
three people just good luck with that oh yeah totally totally and it doesn't get any easier from here i'll say that much there is the without saying too much an epic conclusion to this game that does put on quite a challenge so we'll see how that pans out for our our contestants here I'm liking at least the look of this. It looks like they're filling you up with a lot of ammo and uh, preparing you for what might be coming up. So, Yeah, if there's one thing this game does well, it's making sure that you've got everything you need. And for the avid squanderer, you'll have plenty <laughs> and then some <laughs> without spending it out too, too willy-nilly. But yeah, we should definitely see Crystal Savior and Mega Retro Man coming up to the same area shortly that Chill Dragoon is in. And hopefully Skate Man will bust out of Marrakech soon. Sorry if everybody is hearing Luna in the background there. I've got two adorable dogs just staring me down, wanting to play here. I was about to ask if you were okay over there. <laughs> Ooh. Snipe to the head up on Skate Man. Now, Skate Man has been the one who seems to have had the best angles so far. I, I really like that uh, they're not quite engaging. Like, just tanking hits, anything like that. Uh, maybe that's a uh, detriment to going through fast, but they seem to be well in charge of their health management. Yeah, definitely. And it certainly seems like slow and steady is a good way to play this sometimes when there's far too much going on at once. As we've seen, especially with Chill Dragoon in the secret base, just how, how hairy it can get. And interesting that we had a poll in chat about whether Bond is carrying a pizza or a manhole cover. Depending <laughs> on who you ask, you may get a different answer. It's good that there was no clear winner in that poll. It's just like Twitch chat to tie it up. Now, it looks like Mega Retro Man is making some quick work of the Tibet Mountains. And we've got Chill Dragoon entering a very precarious section. Lots of tanks. If you don't know the story of this game, um, we're essentially trying to prevent uh, an arms operation from continuing to operate by busting them and shutting them down. So when you get to the place with all the tanks, you know it's serious. Well, we have seen a lot of ammo supply crates and things going on, so yeah, you've got to feel that uh, this is most likely nearing the end here. Definitely approaching the last bit. I wouldn't say we're quite near the end yet, but certainly over the halfway point in the case of Chill Dragoon. And we're just over the two-hour mark, I think, for the competition, which will go a total of four hours as the long end of the, the cutoff, I believe. Yeah, but everybody seems to be doing pretty good. I think we're going to be hanging in there within that time frame by the looks of it. It looks like Mega Retro Man going to get uh, a nice progression item right here. So one more step closer to dialing it in within those four hours. Oh, yes. Oh yes, and it seems like Chill Dragoon is making some good progress through the tank area. This part is particularly difficult because you've got these rocket launchers who will just pick you off any screen you're coming in from, like that one right there, your shield does not protect you. You cannot defend against the rockets. You either take them out first or they, they kill you.
Right, some machete in the dark action going on. Getting some sugar cubes. And Mega Retro Man gonna poke out. See? My favorite sprite. <laughs> That's the fellow you meant a while ago. I was scared yes, to talk yeah. to him at first because I didn't know if he was a friend or a foe. And sure enough, he's just a guy in disguise on your side, which is very nice. Yeah, I'm not sure if Mega Retro Man has interacted or not. I mean, I wouldn't have, except I have a... Yeah, that's uh, not suspicious whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, if you can't trust a scary Sasquatch-looking creature on the top of a Tibetan mountain, who are you going to trust, right? Yeah, 100%. And so we see Chill Dragoon taking another attempt through here, working on it, working on getting by. And we've got Skate Man hopefully nearing the end of Marrakech soon enough. Haven't had a chance to check out the inventory lately, but we'll see how that goes. Hopefully he'll get to the desert shortly. Well, now I think I've Pavlov dogged myself there. As soon as you said the desert in my head, all I heard was... Dan -a -dan. Classically conditioned right now. Not surprising. And Hopefully I'm, I'm not the only one. Anybody else? Anybody else in chat uh, <laughs> hearing the song right now? I hope so. I will also say that even though Chill Dragoon has quite a lead at the moment, that's not to say that they're shoe in for the win because there are still some pretty serious trials to come in this game a particularly interesting boss fight a very interesting final area to come not necessarily next um, but there are definitely some fun things coming up and we've seen now chill dragoon has stumbled into a fight with odd job and figuring out the strat right away okay. All right, so a little Captain America on hat action. Seems to, uh... <laughs> what a... How many hats? So many hats, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I can say it's not the most intuitive thing to try. At least I speak for myself trying to defend the fact that I came through here four or five times dying horrible deaths at this fight. <laughs> But I did not think to try this right away, so that might be something that might trip up a few people. Yeah, and bad enough that, A, it's a maze to even get around to this point, and everybody's shooting rocket launchers, and yeah, this is, uh, this is a definitely <laughs> interesting area. Good difficulty spike. And TR... <laughs> Hello, and who was worse, Oddjob or the Frog from Blaster Master? All of them. All of them were terrible. This this guy's not bad once you figure it out, but looks like Chill Dragoon made quick work at Oddjob. Good job on that. Right on. And I guess, though, that's, that is a very handy item to have and just keep it out by the looks of it, because, yeah, this, this is a scary area. Yeah, the only thing is you cannot attack while you've got your shield out, so you've got to be pretty selective about when you choose to use it, but you can stunlock enemies. Ooh, nice Chill find in that sugar cube there. Yeah. Well, and Chill Dragoon's making this section look easy. I'll be curious to see how other people fare here. And Mega Retro Man's not too far behind in the sumo battle at the moment, having the best time of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Reminding me of your uh, playthrough of Arcana with the belly, the rolling belly wizards. Now you get the, <laughs> the belly dancing going on right here in the sumo room. Yeah, those folks were so rude in Arcana, it was not even funny. Yeah, it definitely was a very fun game. I have played so many different games lately. Arcana, first-person perspective dungeon crawler with card themes. 
The Magic of Scheherazade on NES I just finished up the other day too, and it was a phenomenal time. Such good music in that game, it's been perpetually stuck in my head. Um, hearing this game music again though, has been very nice too. Dana, dana. Yeah, the save, the save and quit option, very, very smart in terms of getting respawned back at the beginning of the section. Definitely a good time saver there. And right now too, all of our competitors are not really aware of when any where anybody else is relative to them. So I can imagine after getting stuck in the desert, as long as Chill was stuck there, that it definitely would make sense to try to hustle fast as you can because you don't know if anybody else is right on your tail or what. Well, and there's been definitely, uh, some things seem to be a lot more intuitive to different players. I'm not, and by no means does any of this seem immediately intuitive. They've done some really good work right away, but like Chill had a little bit of a problem figuring out the uh, the sumo room, whereas it looked like Mega Retro Man figured that out relatively fast. Yeah, the desert was a little hang up spot, but the navigating through Marrakesh was uh, really well done. Different things, so yeah, it's it's been uh, really interesting to see the different playstyles coming through, and whose strengths are where. And uh, I do know that. I uh, I think Crystal Saver has all the luck on their side because that was one heck of a blackjack winning spree we saw after that 50-50, too. Gosh, was it ever. I could have only prayed and wished and hoped for that kind of luck in that particular section. And seeing how much other people struggled with it, definitely the person who pulled ahead the, fur the fastest and the furthest in the gambling because goodness is that ever fun to see it's satisfying even when you're watching it happen even if you're not the person winning you're like yeah go buddy because there's so many other folks here tonight and myself included when i played that were held up there so it's good to see somebody have some good luck so we're seeing chill dragoon now go back to a previous area and there's some some good old Game Boy Gore going on there. Lots of birds feasting on corpses. What's going on? I guess we'll find out a little bit of some plot coming up soon. Holes and roofs, lots of bodies everywhere, unfortunately. Okay, and probably for the last time we'll see Skate Man in this particular section work in the angles. I believe so. I, I could be totally wrong on that because there's a lot of screens going through this cavern. I might be remembering it wrong, but I think that's it. I think they're uh, making some great progress now. Yep, Glad to see that help. Definitely seems to be on the right track, I think, yeah. Should be hopefully heading out to the desert in a moment. Well, if this hallway wants to cooperate... Ooh, ooh that was quick work. Okay, getting a good couple double chops, a little health pack in their sugar cube. And off they go to get shot again. Oh dear, these hallways are just so unforgiving. Yeah, it would seem so, and it looks like Crystal Saver just got his hands on the grappling hook, or the rope, so should be able to do some ascension here. Hopefully they can figure out how that works pretty quick. And, um, I'm not sure, is that like a live ammunition? Site? Like, what is falling around Chill Dragoon right now? Banner, banner. Uh, this particular section is awful. It is pretty random, I feel. I, despite all of my best efforts to figure out a pattern, I think it's bombs that are falling. I call them boulders. They could be any number of things, but the long story short is that they take a quarter of your health bar every time you get hit. 
and they're extremely hard to avoid. And this entire section is a maze. There's several ways to go through this place, several places to get to through this maze as well. So it's really a, a, a battle, a war of attrition to get through this particular section here. Ooh, yeah, and with no shadows or anything to really help you with those, yeah, you don't know when that uh, ammunition or whatever it may be is going to actually stop and hit, too. So that's, that is scary. But a few yeah. med packs, how many, I didn't see how many med packs they had for Chill Dragoon, but looks hopefully like they're, enough. They're running low, it looks like. I saw, I think, two left. Last I oh, saw. Okay. Yeah, so, and I don't know that there's a very good place to restock on them here, so it's a, it's a pretty hairy section to get through. Mega Retro Man has arrived in the secret base and is currently searching and trying to survive the rocket launching jerks. Crystal Saver speaking to Gruntiatus's very favorite NPC so far. Reminds me of that uh, scene in The Simpsons where the banker is wearing the ape costume. Ooh. I don't know. Just cracks me up. It's very funny. Everything in this game is very funny. And I think folks shortly will be going on to a section where my favorite NPC is. Which I'll point out when we get there, of course. There's also a fellow, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a fellow named Saddam that we just... It's just uh, so funny. Yeah, not, not spelled <laughs> quite the same, but definitely an interesting name choosing here. So intimidating. <laughs> oh, that was classic. Yeah, and Chill Dragoon making quick work of Saddam. At the end of what is a very precarious section, but just, again, making this game look so easy. Okay, so yeah, do you go in that area with the door? Do you not? We'll find out if uh, there's more backtracking, but oh, I was just going to say... That top of the screen bomb is concerning because there's still a whole other section to go and immediately bomb drop right on the head. Didn't even get to finish the sentence. Yeah, it's a pretty unforgiving area. Oh, two in a row there. Yeah, this is bringing back some terrible memories for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a full blanket right now, aren't you? Just <laughs> hugging yourself. Pretty much. I've got a, a stuffy on my lap and I've got a blanket on and I'm rocking very gently back and forth. <laughs> As is tradition. So it seems like Skate Man has just put an end temporarily, at least put a man to bed in the middle of a casino. So Skate Man has made quick work of Fezzi McGee and will very soon be breaking out of Marrakesh. Yeah, I am honestly surprised after just seeing a few different things with this game and knowing just how large that area is, just how quickly people have managed to get through there. Because I thought this was going to be about the standard for everybody. Like, oh, maybe might be like the two and a half hour mark kind of thing. So, But still a few roadblocks here and there to go. But really impressive work from everybody. This has uh, been a lot of fun. And let's see if, uh, if anybody is interested in maybe trying your hand at this some point again. I'll put in the command... If you are interested in possibly being part of a Lifeline episode or possible other events with Speedrun Hall of Fame, uh, by all means, uh, don't worry about your skill level, different things like that. There are no wrong ways to have fun on a Saturday night here with the Hall of Fame, so try it out. Yeah, and I cannot echo that sentiment enough. And if anybody is even remotely interested in retro games and wants to hang out with a very nice community, and just like Gruntiatis has said, have some fun. 
there are a lot of other ways you could spend a Saturday, but this is definitely one of my personal favorites in recent past. Yeah, I've been having a great time with this. And uh, again, I'm, I'm just after saying the timer, <laughs> it's like, wow, two hours have passed. It seems like no time at all. It's so true, and it's just interesting to see how all of these wonderful competitors have been approaching the various issues, running through all of the different problems, seeing the different stumbling points for different folks as well, and also the, just the different strategies that they've employed. Like, Mega Retro Man is busting through a secret base up against people with rocket launchers with his bare fists, and <laughs> we saw other people choosing alternative weaponry to make quick work. It really depends on what your preferences are, and there are a lot of different ways to approach this game. Which is really nice, because at this point, which is fairly far into the adventure, you do have quite a lot at your disposal, and there are lots of refills on things, so it's very good to see them using them in different ways and, and trying out different stuff. Well, that John Travolta Saturday Night Fever pose will not be the death of him. He's, he's staying alive. Staying alive. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> We've got Skate Man going to the Sahara with the smallest little bit of health, just like everybody else that we've seen heading into this uh, section. Yeah. Classic. Let's, let's hope for a speedy walk through Death Desert. And good job, Skate Man. You're on your way. Yeah, it's only going to get better. <laughs> yeah, that is a really tough section, so... But it's probably not going to feel immediately rewarding, as uh, we have seen with others. But yeah, good job on the potential save, maybe? Question mark? No. What's great about Skateman is that we know that he has referred to that navigation device a lot. So if he thinks outside the box here, there we go. That's right, the satellite map. Bust that out, find your coordinates, let's go. On your way. I mean, that could make up a fair amount of time if utilized properly as well. So there you go, let's say different, different strategies. And no there's kidding. the coordinates immediately after checking the locator. Going up right away. Great job to actually get the canteen. It's looking promising. Mm -hmm. It's such a funny contrast watching Crystal Saber beating up sumos. <laughs> and then we've got Skate Man wandering through a desert. We've got Mega Retro Man in the tank zone. And then Chill Dragoon onto the next kind of civilian war area, um, pushing ever further into this arms operation. Off to Russia. Actually. Oh wow, look at the, the backdrop here. Nothing has felt repetitive for any stage whatsoever. Like it's not just generic trees. It's not like there's just even little subtle differences in the floor tiling. Everything. It's I'm absolutely loving the look of this game. Yep, and there's so much to take in as well. And by the time you get to Russia, everything is just intense. Like huge, huge, monstrous containers everywhere. Folks with those rocket launchers you'll see coming out. Lots of grenade throwers. It's just, it's so intense in this area. We're actually on the very short climb away from what'll turn out to be the end. What the end section is coming up awfully fast for Chill Dragoon if they can maintain that lead. And, well, like a good maze section, like they've utilized in a lot of Chill Dragon finding a dead end, but uh, seemingly finding a lot of sugar cubes along the way, so that's good. Well, and a good thing to point out, too, is that no dead end is really a negative here, because a lot of rewards come at the end of dead ends. There are often items to find or little stashes of things that can be picked up from battling enemies along the way. So if you're looking to farm anything or build up your ammo stashes, anything like that, it does pay to wander a little bit. And did I see that correctly? Did Chill Dragoon just chop a rocket launcher 
Did he chop that ammo into the air and not get hit? Did I see that right? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know that I was ever able to deflect anything, but maybe other folks in chat might have some thoughts on that. I did not have any success playing baseball with bullets in this game. How overpowered is this machete? Loving it. The fist is almost nearly as strong, which I think is so funny. <laughs> Well, if he was able to deflect one, he didn't deflect that one. And that was the one that mattered, because uh, quick death right there, but... Let's see, do they remember the path? All of that good stuff. Uh, Saber is in the scary hallway section. With a locator and some sugar cubes. And Skate Man, I kind of stopped looking, but uh, is utilizing the... Locator. Also going to refill on their way to... Uh, I forget if they started at 2-7 and then 7-2 is where they're going. It's too late for me. Find the airbase. Trying again to help out. Okay. Too bad Skate Man couldn't just throw that poor person over his shoulder. But found that, you see, nice and fast. Got that air base. That was quick. Definitely very fast there. So catching up. Catching up for sure. There we go. That different play style coming through. And I, I just can't help but feel for Crystal Saber. And these, <laughs> you just look at those. I don't know what formation that is or who trains three guards to group and walk weirdly like that. But uh, oddly effective. I don't think I can criticize it that much because it is working. Oh yes, the people who built this secret base and made it filled with skinny little hallways and then stocked it full of jerks with guns. Yeah, totally. 100% effective against anybody you're trying to keep there. Except not our, our fist-faring friend. <laughs> we can yeah, get... Yeah, rocking the fist. Not worried about the machete at all. Yeah mind-blowingly effective just punching your enemies speaking with Zong Mei and Chill Dragoon walking with that shield out very smart oh yeah but it's, like you mentioned a little bit tough to know when to put it away and to get back to it Finding the timing, keeping a little bit of distance with the gun, but still ate a few shots that time, but definitely a good strategy in the works right now once they kind of figure out the timing of how greedy do you get with those bullet shots and how much should you have the shield out instead. So I think everybody everybody gets caught with that, you know. You you just want to get that extra shot in. Maybe it's that last hit to take down the enemies and you end up taking a hit you know you shouldn't have taken. So with these uh, small health bars, we got to see how that's going to work out. Yeah, totally. And the other thing is you can see Chill Dragoon's ammo coming down really fast. You start at 99 for your pistol and with single bullet shots, it lasts a bit longer, it feels like. But the semi-automatic weapon definitely blew through that ammo so fast because you just you get gun happy and you, it's very easy to miss in this game the enemies don't exactly just stand still waiting to eat your bullets for breakfast either oh and right there that i i would have got hit by that too chill dragoon seemed to have find a pattern had the shield out there was spacing between the shots and then that time the the guard just shot twice in a row immediately so tough Tough sections, and the reward is a dead end. Yay. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite thing to run into a dead end after almost dying. <laughs> but it seems like Skate Man is well into Tibet now, making the climb there. And we've got Crystal Saver doing the da 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 dance <laughs> with Mega Retro Man coming up against. Odd job. So let's see if he can figure out the strat immediately. Going for grenades first. So let's see how this pans out for him. Right. And Skate Man not really taking the uh, calculated 
route they were. I think they're starting to rush through a little bit more. Working on that speed. Going straight for the help, not worrying about clearing everybody out all the time. So maybe a little shift in strategy right now. Maybe they're maybe they're just gonna mix it up and just work fast. But yeah, let's see. Mega Retro Man. Like I say, how intuitive is this section? Does Mega Retro Man not have the shield yet? That's does the question. It does not look like it. I did not see it there. Uh-oh. Looks like some exploration is needed. And that's kind of tricky. Too. <laughs> yeah. You kind of run into a boss and you think, I could beat him. I've got what I need. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tricky. Because you get there and you're thinking, well, I must have what I need. I'm here. But no, you got to go back for that shield. Chat pointing out that Chill Dragoon has five med kits. Looking pretty good at this section, honestly. Uh, you know, encountered a few dead ends, but now maybe knowing where to go, a little bit more cautious. I feel like instead of the pistol, there are certain spots to use those janky hitboxes. But yeah, I like even just the simple level design of it's giving those little nooks for your angles to be better than their angles, but you have to get up in that spot to avoid the the rocket launcher fire. Just, it's all really well laid out all around, every stage. I, I haven't found anything that seems to be janky or not really intentionally placed to make for a good gaming experience here. Definitely agreed on that one. Crystal Saver hanging on to a smidgen of life and no med packs to be found, unfortunately. Yeah, there's lots of ammo around here, but yeah, I don't remember uh, a lot of med pack locations, so could be a big sugar cube adventure for a little bit just to get the health. Or was that an exploding sugar cube? Did that betray him? I think some of them do betray you, absolutely. Some of them are packed filled with, with bombs, it would seem. Oh. Sugar cubes, no. We I need know. you. I know. If my memory hasn't failed me, I think that there is at least one med kit to be found in a locker in one of these little side halls. I believe in the middle hallway, there's several vertical hallways with a couple of horizontal offshoots, and it's in one of those, I think, because I feel like I walked through this area a lot. And it's in one of these little spots where you can pick one up if you search. And uh, just to point out that Crystal Saver, Mega Retro Man, and Chill Dragoon have only used very, very little on their lifelines right now. Flying solo for a lot of it, I wouldn't necessarily call it brute force. They've, they've done some good work here, but it's, uh, yeah, Mega Retro Man still with every hint at their disposal. I think we've found someone who uh, enjoys our playstyle, Hungry. <laughs> I think one of us. One of us. Welcome one to the club. Us. You never know when you're going to need them. Like somebody pointed out earlier, maybe there's DLC that's coming out right immediately after. You, you can't use these too soon. You don't get them back. Yeah, and like, what if there is a sequel and you can carry over your character into the next game? We wouldn't yeah. want to show up with nothing in our inventory. Respecting the Mega Retro Man strategy. Yeah, much, much respect for that. Seems like he's doing a lot of pensive action there, standing in the middle of a gunfire fest, trying to get his bearings, maybe. I'd love to hear what's going on in his mind right now. Yeah, is it checking notes? Is it just trying to stop and think, have I been here when I went up there? What's around this corner? Or is it, uh, oh geez, I, I got no med kits. I got no health. I don't like these angles to, I can't jank my way through this, you know? Yeah, it'll be nice to hear 
uh, some of our contestants' thoughts at the end. If we have an opportunity, of course, to have an interview or two with some of these folks. Yeah, because there are lots of options. Oh, and then now we see Skate Man. They have a hook. Why didn't it work? Hmm. I wonder, I think you have to be standing underneath the statue, specifically, and then try to deploy it. I think he was slightly to the left, so hopefully he'll think to go back and try that again, because it would be a shame to see him really have a little bit of a setback here. Well, actually, I think, uh, I think they're on the right path now, if I'm looking at the icon correctly. I think they gotta see a person about a thing before that's gonna work for them. You, you are probably right. I've been trying to watch four people play the same game all night, and I've forgotten who's who's done what, who is where, all of that good stuff. Yeah, it's and it's tough because you can't really say too much in case they're, you know, I I don't want to spoil too much in case they're they're able to watch or whatever's going on. But yeah, let's hope nobody's sneaking a listen in here, eh? I don't think that'd be the case. Everybody seems to be doing really well. Um, oh. Oh, I thought, uh, I thought Chill Dragoon was grabbing grenades for that section. Well, they got an exploding sugar cube as a reward, so... I was gonna think if that was gonna work to their advantage in these narrow hallways so that they could stay back. I haven't really seen what the, uh, the hitbox is when the grenade goes off. Is it fairly large, Hungry? Do you remember? It's a pretty large hitbox, but it kind of goes on an arc, so it's a little bit hard to aim, I feel. Um, the distance is pretty hard to master, especially if somebody's firing on you. It can be a little bit tricky. Okay, but yeah, that uh, that explosion actually doesn't look as large as I would hope if I was <laughs> in these narrow corridors. But it is super effective by the looks of it, so it's a good trade-off. But yeah, like say with that arch, that's... It does look really hard to land exactly where you want it to. It seems to only be a large explosion when it affects you, right? And then when oh, you need course. it to work to your benefit, uh-uh. Okay, all right, but you can throw it over what's go- Oh, very good use there. I didn't even notice that from earlier that you could throw it over like the backdrops, but the reward for that knowledge into a new screen was... Yeah, One more death, one more trip. Everyone's dying, it seems. This The secret base is really tough. We've seen a lot of deaths there. Uh, this Russia stretch is also very tough. Skate man paying your favorite little guy a visit there. Ah, you love to see. I don't know what it is about the sprites on Skate Man's screen when he comes out of the pause menu here, but they've always reminded me of Bleeding Gums Murphy. For no good reason whatsoever. I, they're wearing a hat, but it looks like some fun hair and some sunglasses, and I can't I see it. that. Yeah, no, I, I totally see that, yeah. <laughs> I hate that that's all that I can see. Well, now I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. That makes one of us. <laughs> da -da -da -da. I wonder what Skate Man's strategy here is for taking the night vision goggles off. If they're feeling like the enemies might not see them as easily. I have noticed earlier, on. yeah, they, they weren't using it when going through. I'm not sure if they just... Maybe they're just trying to get through the dungeon. Uh, they feel like they remember the layout or just, yeah, trying to brute force a section. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, big grenade hit right there. Yeah, certainly seems like an interesting approach, because I guess if you don't really know all of the 
the possibilities that exist with an item in a game, right? You might think, well, if I take off my goggles, it's like little kids, right? I can't see you, so you can't see me. That's a good, <laughs> yeah. that's a good extension to try, right? To start out. I mean, how neat would it be if that actually is how it worked, though? They would be the only person who have found that and maybe have a quick advantage. So good to try. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And looks like Crystal Saber's trying to make some good use out of that shield there, but taking another another keel. And Chill Dragoon still wandering through Russia, through the wreckage of Russia, it would seem at the moment, given how exploded everything looks there. But making some quick work of most folks. I'm curious if all the radioactive symbols are just to scare people away because uh, I, I feel like one of your necessary items should at the very least be a hazmat suit because uh, that does not look safe to be wandering around just in a tuxedo, you know? Yeah, unless the tuxedo is made with some kind of repellent, some kind of antimicrobial layering or something, maybe lined with heavy metals that are known to kill <laughs> the different kinds of microorganisms to keep them off of him. I mean, Q does make some amazing gadgets, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Q, get me the antimicrobial tuxes. Yeah, exactly. Why not, right? And looks like Skate Man's about to face off with some sumos bringing it back around. Right, and yes, pointed out by Mia, Mega has the shield, but still opting to do the staying alive pose for the time being. Yeah, let's see if Mega Retro Man will start to use the shield and see what it's all about. And the manual for this game is actually really good. So if anybody likes reading manuals, everything in it is very well explained it does a really good job of illustrating everything you need to know. So if you ever do play this game, I'm pretty sure every single item has a description, which is pretty beneficial because I know a lot of games that just don't tell you. <laughs> They're like, hey, you found a thing. Have fun experimenting with it until you can discover its use. And that's one thing, uh, especially with Game Boy, just limited buttons. It almost draws your brain into thinking, well, there's only one way to do something. But even with the... Uh, a golf game that I had, like, if you time pressing down an A at the right time when you hit the ball, that will give you backspin. So you're never really sure, and that's kind of the charm of the old games. They wanted you to have a good experience. It came with the manual. You usually looked at it, right? But now, modern day, we kind of just play the game, right? So I would definitely like to take a look at this manual and just see what they did to make it a better experience for everybody. Yeah, I personally feel like it's a, a good package deal. You get all the things that you need to know. But you're right, though, about the control scheme. There's not really a lot of options. And really, because you can put any item into A or B, you have quite a limited attempt of pushing one button to see what comes out of that, right? So you're, yeah, not, exactly. you're not really stuck, even looking for combinations of things. Unless you want to do the, the punch and block dance, then you can use A and B to your heart's content. But apart from that, every item is a single button push. So it's pretty straightforward, which is why I think it was a really good choice for this format. I have a feeling that you're going to fire this game up just to do that dance before you call it a night tonight. Oh, probably. I've got my uh, my GBA SP right beside me. I did not dig out my cartridge, but it is not too far away, so I certainly could do that. Okay, those terrible hallways for Mega Retro Man. The shuffling guards. No regard for each other's safety, just pointing guns in each other's backs and hoping that the they'll kill Bond, but a good angle there, making short work of that with a sugar cube for a reward. 
We got the tank maze going pretty well for Crystal Saver up there. But uh, curious to see how it goes this time. Looks like Chill Dragoon's progress is going better. I might have just commentator cursed because he took a pretty big hit. And now Grenade McGee is uh, doing the work. Oh, <laughs> if the machete doesn't reach. I love that he tried. Looks like Mega Retro Man is making his way back. Alright, alright. We've got a fight against Jaws here. Here we go. Another small arena big man moment. Oh no. And that's why they call him Jaws. Apparently, this guy just likes to munch heads. Yeah. Oh, okay, so not only do you have to remember which button does the magnet thing, but you got to get him up there fast enough. There you go. Mm -hmm. And every single boss in this game is different, so you'll never use the same strategy twice. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. You thought you had it, but you didn't. That's kind of neat, though. It's it's, it's, it's that a window weird. is so small. I would personally love to know how this character works in the movies because if somebody started eating Sean Connery's hair or something as a as a way to teach him a, a lesson, I'd love to see that. The old adamantium munchers. It's, uh, it's an underutilized villain scheme, but, uh, you know, apparently effective. Yeah, and looks like Chill Dragoon has made quick work of Jaws and is off to another maze with folks wearing tactical equipment, I believe, at this point. So again, another escalation. Now they'll take six punches or bullets instead of four, maybe? I believe Low so. Health. Low health scenario going on. Fumbling with switches... What is the combination to hear the magic noise? And Maya coming in with a little known fact about how Sean Connery's hair is whiskey and cotton candy flavored. Very nice to know. I'm not going to acknowledge that you made that up. That is now canon to me. And JSR going on to say that Jaws is an assassin from 2007 movies, The Spy Who Loved Me, and Moonraker. Moonraker I've never even heard of. Uh, in the first movie, he's a terrifying villain that survives many assaults that would kill most. In the second, he's basically immortal. <laughs> he survives an exploding space station. How does one do that? I'd love to see that movie just to see that. With good teeth. Obviously. They That's must all have. Need. Do they have rocket fuel in there to help to propel him through the atmosphere to save him? I'd like to know. Yeah. I don't understand. Maybe they prevent his head from exploding from the vacuum of space. Ah, uh, yeah. A good jaw could go a long way in that case. Just the one weakness, magnets. But strong magnets, though, apparently. That's uh, pretty industrial. I don't, I don't know what uh, scenario you need to line up that many magnets specifically. <laughs> what what part of the factory or whatever that is but uh and why he would be there of all the places for you to be jaws there were so many other spots you could have been right his own worst enemy it reminds me very much of the brave little toaster if you've seen that movie before at the car wrecking yard where there's a terrible evil magnet that's what they needed in this part to get jaws none of this button pressing spontaneous pattern nonsense they needed that guy to come and make that man become a cube like they do in that movie it's terrible i do remember that that movie exists and i can picture the toaster but any details other than that <laughs> i got nothing it seems like mega retro man has figured out the odd job fight tactic 
So found yeah, that shield. Yeah, good work on that. Might have taken a bit to uh, acquire the shield, but uh, immediate good use. Yeah, so many little side steps and things. Oh, you didn't have the egg or little things here and there that just trip up your progress. And as someone who's playing uh, Ocarina of Time and just played through the Water Temple, I kind of feel that. Where you just don't make that one turn at the right time, you think you're making great progress, and you gotta backtrack and waste all that time. In a race scenario, that cannot feel good for them. But Oh, these enemies on Chill Dragoon's side are also not very forgiving. Back to more switches. Yeah, and it seems as well like some of the playing field is starting to level out. We've got Crystal Saber and Mega Ratraman at least in the same area, still a ways behind Chill Dragoon with a very large lead. But Skateman is catching up too, though, in the secret base, fighting through the hallways of Doom, on the way hopefully to some success as well. Yeah, what, uh, what took a little bit of time, Marrakesh is definitely not seeming to be an issue for everything else. This was what they were waiting for the whole time. This seems to really suit their uh, play style, but checking all the right spots to get the items, not spending too much time. Mostly great angles on the fights, like I noticed they, they really haven't taken much damage throughout. I mean, that was a cheap shot. Uh, unfortunate timing. <laughs> Commentator's curse, probably, but... Uh... Other than when I'm talking, they're doing a great job on their health management. Yeah, gosh, how dare you? Cursing. Poor skate man. It's, it's kind of a running gag. If you've ever seen uh, any Mike Tyson's Punch-Out tournaments, you don't want me to be the commentator. Uh, I just have the uncanny way of finding the, the right thing to say at the wrong time, you know? Well, I mean, I've seen what you've done to Mr. Sandman, so I'm certainly well aware of all of your evil powers... It was meant to be squished, and you know it. <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. And Crystal yeah. Saber is also on to the way of attacking Oddjob, firing off some some good torpedoes, torpedoes, rockets. To no success, switching quickly back to the shield, the giant cookie, however you choose to, to think about it. I guess I'm seeing it more as a donut or a terrible chocolate chip cookie with only one chocolate chip. That's a big honking chocolate chip, though, on the bright side. Indeed. Or maybe it's like one of those uh, sugar cookies where they got like the little filling kind of in the middle. The Anybody else hungry all of a sudden? I'm always just, hungry. Just yeah, <laughs> but it's... But peak freens are so good. I used to peel out the little strawberry bit in the middle and eat it. And then not really want the rest of the cookie. I just wanted the little gummy piece in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I like that Saver was not only throwing hats, but also rifling a few shots off as well in hopes that that would work. So really well done. Making sure no stone left unturned on that one. We're left with a provocative pose and one more shot for good measure. Good job, Saver. Just in case, you know. Don't let that pose fool you. Fire again. Yeah, for all we know, Odd Job has about 18 different final forms. This is it, and that's why you cannot use those lifelines too willy nilly. You never know. The big question is will Mega Retro Man decide to use a hint tonight? Because he's still got all of them. I don't know what I'm rooting for at this point. Yeah, do we want to see him come through and and not even not even need any help, or would we like to see him come on in and maybe ask for a little a little push? Although everybody does have some hints left. Skate Did Mega just, just blow up those two enormous boulders with a punch? I think he might have. <laughs> that punch really is strong. <laughs> I was assuming there was an item or something he needed. That was ridiculous. He's a beast. I love it. 
Yeah, a beast, yeah. that fist, must be made of something so strong. Diamond fists. Yeah, to heck with you, Jaws, and your adamantium munchers. There, you got old Diamond Fist McGee here just swinging away. Was That's right, we got another McGee. Another, another McGee, it would seem. Was it the exploding pen? Was that what that was? So it wasn't a punch at all then, eh? It was the... Oh, it was a pen. Might have been one of Q's items. I, I didn't see the switch over. It looked... Maybe the item was, like, right beside the fist or something, and then when you use it, you just go barehanded or something. But, yeah, to me, it just looked like he just punched it, and it worked. I mean, Well, thank you for clearing that up. It's not too far of a stretch, right? Given where we are, what we're doing yeah. here. <laughs> Pretty much. Like punching people with rocket launchers to death. Uh, not exactly realistic, but there it is. Yeah, and the British spy who's Captain America. I mean, we, we don't need actual logic in these moments, you know? It's weighing us down. Totally. Crystal Saver showing all of those guards no time of day, just punching while walking, <laughs> shoving his way through. Good old Shovey McGee, Crystal Saver. Okay, not everybody can be a McGee. Okay, that's the last one. No, I'm just kidding. I kind of enjoy when everyone's a McGee. It makes it feel like family. They're all on the, the team of wrong anyway, so... The McGee spy family goes back many generations. Indeed. Rivals with the Bonds. Are there many Bonds? Just James Bond, right? Uh, as far as I know, uh, I'm a pretty... Pretty filthy casual when it comes to the series, so I don't know if it's, uh, he's inherited, uh, the, the right to be in the, the British spies, or how it all came down that he even became, but... Banner, banner, on Saber. Oh my, oh my god, what is going on down the bottom right? Chill Dragoon has found a machine! There's always some kind of evil machine in these games, huh? Yes. <laughs> Are we playing RoboCop now? or What is happening? I'm loving it, though. Oh, it's got a fast charge, like... Uh, like Super Smash TV here. Oh, boy. Just something you can't avoid. You just gotta tank the hit. Robo McGee. <laughs> Robo McGee with... Fire. Um, rocket fuel inside? Ignited? That doesn't seem like good use of anything indoors here. Yeah. Went from Mutoid Man to Rocket Pack to... Oh boy. Well, that was a fun fight. Now, is she chilling out near the rocket or tied to that rocket? <laughs> I wasn't able to tell. Just, just hanging out. Uh, tied to, I believe. So your goal is to try to save her from getting sent off into into space. But that's Wait, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Who I would know. not? Who would turn that down? I agree. This part does get quite tricky, though, and you'll see why. Coming on up, it's very very fun here. Lots of different types of things to avoid that you haven't seen before. The game really kind of takes a turn. Oh, can't tank it with the the new mirror shield. All will become clear. Oh, a little shot to the side. We got a rocket launcher. We got a shield. This is kind of reminding me of Secret of Evermore in a way. Right. And when you're up in the above tunnels, you got your bazooka going. All we need is a trusty dog sidekick, and we'd be right back in that game. Every game needs a trusty dog sidekick. Poochie McGee. That's what we need. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, you... immediately lasers. Always with lasers. When you played Secret of Evermore, what did you name your dog? Or have you played it yet? 
I've played through it a few times, but it's been a long... Uh, it's been a few years in between each playthrough. Uh, I'm not really sure what I called uh, Poochie McGee last time. Well, if there's another playthrough in your immediate future, I think you know the dog's name. We all do now, yeah. Another side hit, scary health. All right, yeah. I was I was wondering about the uh, the med kit scenario. Ooh, just tanking a few hits immediately. You got ground lasers. You got freaking sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads up here. It's it's everywhere. Can't get away. There's a lot going on there, and I think a pretty good strategy there is to have both. To double fist the shields, and I see that Chill Dragoon has just figured that out. Okay, so you got your regular bullet shields, you got your moon laser shields. All right, all right. If you're anything like me, you forget which button is assigned to which one, and you eat lasers <laughs> and bullets. Happen. I could see that happening as soon as you said it, yeah. I don't know. There's only two buttons, but I could never keep it straight. I really struggled in this part quite a lot. Oh, it's like having the same the same item, but not, you know. That's, that's going to get confusing. I am mesmerized wow. by the lasers. Yeah, <laughs> how do so you... Uh, how do you... Can you strafe in this? Um, well, that didn't seem to work. There's occasionally an opening there, I think, but it doesn't seem to have a very predictable oh, pattern. Oh, no. My goodness. Run. Run, wow. chill. Uh, my apologies to every other runner right now. I am just totally drawn to that laser hallway. But we found another rocket, and uh, poor Mega Retro Man is getting bombarded in the, uh, the blasting rock maze right now, along with Saber. And uh, Skateman, I think, has made some great progress here in a very short amount of time now that I'm seeing that they're at the uh, the tank maze. Oh, yeah, definitely catching up quick. Yeah. Will it be quick enough? We'll see. Darn you, Marrakesh. If you weren't such a convoluted large area, maybe Skateman had a, a chance to really... Make something interesting in a short amount of time here at the end. Well, there's been so many opportunities for people to pull ahead and fall back and get stuck and then suddenly break away. It's been a pretty exciting race overall, I would say. I've really been enjoying watching, again, all of the different strategies that people have kind of taken, trying to get through the different obstacles here. Okay, we got the shield bazooka combo. Oh, too many sideways hats going on. Darn. As soon as they saw the boss, they never really had much of a chance to figure much out there. So, rough job for Skate Man. Fortunate. I wonder what those hats must be made of, if they're made of saw blades. They definitely have a large brim. It could be like that Mortal Kombat character. It's got the, the metal razor edge around the brim of the hat. That's the guy. You know, with Hattie the... Laser Hat McGee. Yeah. The guy with the fun hat whose name I never remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know the one. <laughs> There's a clip of me playing Mortal Kombat 3 against my husband where I chose that guy because of his hat. Because I didn't know any of the other characters. I played a lot of Mortal Kombat 1 and he promptly destroys me with Sector. And there you go. And also, speaking of destroying, we have Chill Dragoon destroying this game in uh, just a little over three hours. GG. Great GG. job all around. So the question will be if Chill Dragoon picked up the marble, which is an item that will give a secret special ending. Oh, oh doesn't, that's doesn't what the marble is. Yeah, doesn't look like. Didn't look like he picked up the marble. Ba -da -ba -ba. 
Now, I did just want to let you guys know we have an official finish of three hours, three minutes, 44 seconds. And joining us in chat will be our winner tonight, Chill Dragoon. And I would love if we could get some uh, insight on his run and his mindset going through the game and maybe uh, just sit around and hang out with you guys for the rest of this 30 minute sudden death beginning, well, about 10 seconds ago. So good luck to the other three runners. Congratulations and GG's. Chill Dragoon on a very impressive run. Yeah, GG. Definitely some expert gameplay there. Watching how you tackled everything was mesmerizing at times and it just seemed like you had such a knack for problem solving here really good work there all right so yeah we're gonna drag chill dragoon into the channel i believe possibly muted possible maybe afk after the game i mean Hey, you win a, you win a race, sometimes you have to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's true. Well, whenever you're ready, Chill Dragoon, we are ready for you. But yeah, that was that was good. Ready, Sounds good. Hey, there you are. Hey, GG, Chill Dragoon, congrats. Thanks. I, yeah, it was a tough one. But it was fun-ish. The maze has got really annoying, but that's the same with all those types of games well see i'm surprised that you went to the mazes and that you weren't cursing either blackjack or the desert scorpions personally yeah i i know my luck at gambling in general so i, I figured that was gonna be bad well, you definitely pulled through eventually, which is what the important part is. And those two parts of the game, I think for all of the runners this evening, were particularly difficult and were definitely places where a lot of folks got hung up. So to see you kind of bust through there and really, really do such a good job with so much of the game, just totally flying through some sections where folks were having a real hard time. It was really good to see some clever approaches for some of those problems there. Thanks. Yeah, I ended up taking advice and uh, use, uh, or ended up drawing a map, so that helped out with the desert portion at least. It still was a lot of trial and error, but oh well. Well, I would say a three hour and what were we at? Three hours? About, say, uh, that's a really great time for a first time playthrough. So a phenomenal finish, in my opinion. I was saying not too long ago, I played this game probably for about eight hours casually getting stuck. So yeah, it was like a, a work of art at times, especially with the, um, the odd job fight. I was blown away at the intuition to try the shield first because a lot of other people I haven't seen try that straight out. So it was really great thinking on your part to try that. Yeah, I uh, got my butt kicked so easily in the first one, I figured I'd try and at least see what the shield would do. Because <laughs> that first fight was not good. Well, on that note, uh, do you have, after walking away from this, were there any weapons that stood out as a favorite at all? Or were you just a big fan of the shield when it finally came along? Because by that point... Uh, as we can see, poor Crystal Saver literally getting bombarded right now. So, uh, any favorites? Um, probably the machete, just because it was easy to just run in after a while of getting frustrated of other things not working. Yeah, yeah in terms of the guns, the uh, machine gun was handy, just because it goes through people so quickly. Yeah, that triple burst. So in terms of your experience with games like this, have you played much else in this vein? In terms of like a top-down adventure game with some fetch questing? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I have what uh, some people online would consider garbage taste in video games, so I'll play pretty much anything. Um, so yeah, I've just played a lot of random stuff throughout the years. 
but I have a tendency to like pretty much everything. So uh, at least for, I mean, this game's not bad, but I've played like some similar games that are a whole lot worse and those are still fun to go through. I was thinking watching this whole time that I would probably be terrible at a game like this, uh, just the way it is, the way I'm stingy with items and everything else, but you seem to just have a real knack for knowing exactly when to hold on and utilizing that machete a lot, and then, yeah, you just saw certain hallways where it was time to switch to a gun, and yeah, it was just great work all around. Uh, every runner seems to have had a couple moments that don't really fit their play style, different areas with little hang-ups, but overall, uh, great performance from you. Thanks. So in terms of any advice you would give to anybody playing this game casually, is there anything that you might say to someone wanting to play this game? Um, yeah, if you can look up a guide ahead of time. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still kind of annoyed that I had or I missed the uh, item to bypass a lot of that fetch quest portion of Marrakesh. But, oh well, that's how it goes. Well, I mean, in your defense, there's a lot of different things that need to be traded and going on, so I, w I wouldn't beat yourself up too much on that one, eh, Hungry? Oh yeah, definitely not. I think given the circumstances and given how much goes on in that one section, it's definitely the hill that needs to be climbed to get into what is kind of like the, the coast through the rest of it in many ways. So I think given how tricky that was and how difficult it was, you did a great job there. And I was going to ask too, are you a fan of James Bond? And if so, did you find anything in this game particularly amusing or any parts of this game that you felt maybe as a fan that were exciting or funny? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> um, I honestly don't really watch a whole lot of movies and I think I've maybe seen two James Bond movies throughout my entire life. So I honestly, I, I know of Jaws and Odd Job just because of GoldenEye 64 pretty much. And that's, I don't even think I've seen the movies that they were in, so I got nothing there, unfortunately. Yeah, I was saying a while ago that I have not seen any James Bond, and I really felt that the game stood as a good thing all on its own. Even if you're not a fan, there's enough here, I think, to be interesting and kind of fun, regardless. So, um, oh, yeah. would you say, would you say you liked this game overall, even though it gave you some trouble? <laughs> um. Yeah, because, I mean, even if it wasn't in the race, I'd probably still end up playing similarly to how I did. Um, I might take a few things more cautiously, but um, I've been ranking all the games that I've been beating throughout the past couple of years, so I'm actually kind of debating on where this one's going to end up going. It'll probably be somewhere in the mid-range. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, we were, uh, we were discussing how much just even the backdrops are so nice. Everything just seems like it's, uh, aside from maybe Marrakesh being a little bit difficult to know exactly where to go next, but after that it seems a uh, good layout for the hallways, a few un quote-unquote unfair sections and different things, but uh, for the most part the game is pretty good for giving you the resources that it needs and stuff like that, so I was really enjoying it personally. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, checking out the video for this after everything's done, just to see how everything was going. I would say you were probably in the lead for most of the game. There were a few parts where people definitely started getting close to your heels, like the casino, um, the desert as well. A few folks were able to gain a little bit of ground there, but for the most part, you were definitely out in front the majority of the time. Yeah, now that being said, was there any moment, uh, just if you can think back, where were you thinking, oh no, I'm, I've got to be falling behind because of a certain section? Were there certain spots that made you feel nervous about that? Literally the entire game. 
Fair enough. <laughs> started off and I was wandering around the first, uh, well, after the first level, I was wandering around the city for a while and I was just like, I've got no idea where I'm going. This is not going to go well, but apparently it did. So it was good at least. Well, for what it's worth, it certainly seemed like you had some very good intuition quite often. Just put it together pretty quick. And not even just uh, just compared to other folks here, because like Gruntiatus was saying, everybody kind of played to their strengths, and some people got on better with certain parts better, but just watching you go through motion after motion and just hit ball after ball out of the park, it was really cool to see. And I played this one pretty recently and got really stuck in a few places that you just immediately seemed to know what to do. So I was like, wow, that's really great. And so these, these health bars just do not seem forgiving in the later game as well. So those, I was trying to ask how many times, how many health packs do they have? Because... You're getting a quarter of your health taken away at all times. But yeah, it was really well navigated. Yeah, those rockets, even with the shield, they just tear through your health. What did you think of that uh, one of those final hallways where you see the never-ending string of lasers and I saw you trying to maybe angle your, your mirror shield or whatever it is, and they just weren't stopping. Yeah, that did not seem fair. <laughs> but, no, uh, not at all. Yeah, I'm glad I had enough of the heavy vest to just plow through it. Yeah, I was genuinely confused. You know, like, uh, what are you supposed to do right now? Yeah, that it was makes terrifying. sense. You could, like, could strafe while you're holding it or something, but it's uh, you just hold it in front of you. Yeah, it's the one place where a diagonal positioning would have really come in handy it's really tough to get through that whole section i loved the uh the the dual fisting of the both shields just running through that section and i was saying to to grunt on the way that even keeping the button straight about which shields in which hand a or b would be tricky i couldn't even imagine in a race scenario tr with the pressure on right you don't know if anybody's right behind you I think I would have probably panicked and died a lot. Yeah, I was super glad that I didn't during that last part because I <laughs> would have lost a lot of steam, unfortunately. It would have been a little deflating. Yeah, for sure. And I, I definitely see that you've got your, your three passwords up, or name story, to be able to go play some more card games. Is that something you think you might do to relive the wonders and the beauty of the casino? Uh, probably not. I've got apps on my phone for that. Terrible gambling addiction. Well, I learned how to kind of understand what Baccarat was today. Uh, no idea before that, but... Uh, that was that was just so nerve wracking to see, and uh, saying I can't even imagine anybody who decides to speed run this. We hope there's a manip for that casino because that was not forgiving. Yeah, I was trying to putz with it because I wasn't 100 percent sure, but uh, like it seemed like if you go into the blackjack and then just quit out after you, the first hand, like you usually win the first hand and then go from there. But or maybe that was. I don't remember one of them. Either way. Okay, I didn't even pick up on that, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, that initial slew of going to the the window, getting the thousand bucks, and then immediately losing it, <laughs> packing it up, going back to the window, rinse and repeat over and over. I felt for you so much there, because it is not on your side. And if there is a pattern there, I didn't catch it either, but good that you were able to pull through eventually. I loved the throwing it all in and crossing all your fingers approach, because I think that's genuinely the way to go. Yeah, I wasn't having any luck otherwise. Is 
so we've got just about 15 minutes left of the 30 minute countdown timer here for the remaining competitors to hopefully cross the finish line. Yeah, and a couple couple close competitors going on, but I'm still uh still really impressed with Skate Man. How well they are able to uh, just make quick work here after that one initial hang up they had. They're really breezing through a lot of this. Totally, yeah. We've got two two folks in Russia, it looks like. And we've got Skate Man going up against Saddam. Soon enough, anyway. <laughs> tough fight. Tough fight. Out of all of the bosses, Chill Dragoon, was there any of them that you thought were particularly fun to, to figure out? Or unique? Anything you hadn't seen before? Uh, the Jaws fight actually was kind of amusing. I'm just glad that he didn't do more damage than he did, because I got my teeth kicked in a few times. There's nothing quite like having somebody pick you up and, and eat you in the middle yep. of a video game um, in such an amusing way, too. That fight definitely makes me laugh. And all of the boss fights are all just so uniquely formulated and nothing is quite the same twice. So it's keeping you on your toes a little bit. What did you think when that giant robot turned out at the end? Nope was unexpected. <laughs> I was figuring that that was what the uh, mirror was going to be used for, and then that didn't work. So just had to shoot it to death like everything else. Did you happen to pick up on the fact that your fists were almost as strong as single bullets and almost as strong as machete chops? Because it's kind of funny that they are all equally effective. <laughs> yep, it's like four hits per everything. The machete was just mostly nice because you had a little bit more reach, but at least it felt like it. I don't know if it's actually true or not. It seems like it, though, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a benefit to be using it. And I also enjoyed the approach of a little bit of melee and a little bit of distance attacking there, like alternating between them. Because, like you were saying there, even with the shield up, you can't block any of those rockets. You can't really do too much to really protect yourself in the later game, so I think you had some really great strategy in terms of knowing when to kind of switch it up and brute force your way through. I loved especially the the punching while running through the hallways tactic, which made me laugh. I was always someone who would try to kill every enemy for the drops and try to keep my medkit stash up in things, but it seemed like your way worked as well. Yeah, it was kind of mean that they... Uh had the explosives that could drop and just hurt you. Yeah, we were talking about the the cube betrayal and how horrible it must feel yeah. when you're hanging on to your last sliver of life and just take a chance and end up eating some more damage for breakfast. Now, did you think they were sugar cubes as well? Because I've been calling them sugar cubes. No, but it fits. I <laughs> just assumed they were generic pickups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any stage in particular stand out? Let's look back on, or are you hoping to forget all of them at this point and move forward? No, it wasn't too bad. Um, Tibet was interesting. It was frustrating walking out of a cave and realizing that I had walked all the way back to the beginning, but um, yeah, just going around that one was actually kind of amusing. That's where Grunt's favorite NPC was, that large lumbering guy partway up who's actually your friend. <laughs> and the weird costume. And it seems like we've got Crystal Saber and Mega Retro Man Pretty much neck and neck. Uh, Mega Retro Man just making his way to the Jaws fight here, about to get chewed up. Yeah, the window on this is so small to even get Jaws to that area. Good work there, though. 
see how Saber fares. Went for a turnaround Bazooka Blast, but unfortunately uh, just not able to hit any of the buttons just yet. I don't think he's... Oh, there we go. And his reward for figuring it out was too small of a window. <laughs> Not able to get it there. Poor Skate Man is now getting bombarded in the who knows where those things are going to drop section. I do like this Skate Man, uh, the color palette again. I, it's it's drawing my eye, but during that uh, that section with all of the, uh, the holes in the ground, the fire shooting up, just kind of nice. You don't need it for this game, but it is kind of cool to see just the little extra with the color palette. Does everybody out there in chat feel at the moment? Are you thinking Saver or are you thinking Mega Retro Man are going to be the one to finish first for the... Finish second, I guess, but finish first between the two. Do we get a poll? A prediction? We gambling? I think uh, I think maybe a little gamba for everybody could be an all right idea because this is close. And uh, already before the poll is up, we got to vote for Mega Crystal Retro Saber Man. So everybody's favorite fifth contestant. Indeed, and looks like there is a prediction in chat. If anyone wants to participate with channel points, feel free to throw in some points. Get in on the gambling fun. And they both have their uh, volume up at least. Mine was too quiet. I didn't hear that uh, it actually gives you an audio cue when uh, you have the right combination. Oh, so you were just lucky in that you just went to go check the doors and see if they had opened? No, I, well, I had it too quiet. But I like was starting to hear stuff after messing around with the second one, so then I had to go back to the first one and make sure that that was actually set because I ended up turning up my volume at that point. Ah, uh, because yeah, that is uh, definitely it doesn't really have much of a pattern or anything intuitive. So glad you figured that out sooner than later. Everybody with the armor right now, super tanky. That Mega map. Man. That health is concerning for me, right? <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say that that map that Mega Retro Man is looking at reminds me of one of the Golden Eye stages where you've got to photograph the map. Mm -hmm. And you need some kind of key card. And I threw it on the ground by accident and then ended up, <laughs> for some reason, uh, pointing my camera at the floor and then all of my controls changed on the N64 and I could not look up again. So I just spent all of this time staring at the ground, unable to figure out how to fix it, and had thrown something on the ground and couldn't pick it back up again. And it was a nightmare. So that's what that map reminded me of. You just have the best experiences with certain games, don't you? <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> There's a glitch to find. FPS games and I don't mix. Um, that's why I really like this game as an option for James Bonding, because it is a lot friendlier to people like me who can't keep that many buttons on a large controller straight. Right, 
to the long hallway walk on Saber. More hallway, more hallway, there we go. Sure is an awful lot of hallway with not many rooms to find in this, uh, this particular spot. I don't know who the engineer was. It's like a lot of wasted space to me. And no windows. Great tile work, though. Oh, and a death on Saber. Mm, all right. Well, we are getting down to four minutes and 20 seconds. That was not meant to be a meme. That actually just worked out. Uh, 4.20 left on the clock for our runners getting down. Are we going to see the space station? What's going to happen? Will Skate Man make it into the fancy tile work in that short amount of time? Now, uh, Kill Dragoon, were you utilizing a notepad a lot? Like, I know some of it seems fairly straight, but even in a late section like this, were you still trying to make a few notes, or what was the what was the plan at this point? Were you just kind of running around? Yeah, it was. Uh, I pretty much used the notepad just for the desert, even if it didn't look like it was helping out much. But uh, yeah, aside from that, I just have a tendency to bash my head against the wall until something works so I was just trying to rush through it as much as I could yeah try as I might watching this like I'm, I'm just seeing Saver run around I'm like I don't remember where he was supposed to go next but oh there's switches yeah I probably would have done the same thing as yourself just kind of brute force my way through most of it and But that's why I'm probably better suited for just talking into the microphone and not even attempting to be a contestant <laughs> for maybe a game like this. I don't know. It, it did uh, did look like a lot of fun, even though I'm pretty sure I would be just absolutely terrible at uh, this game in particular. I think you should do it. I think you'd be great. Well... Still lots of uh, Lifeline episodes to come up in the future, and uh, remind if anybody is new, hasn't heard me say it before, we do have our application section, so if you've been having a good time with this and you'd like to be a part of it, by all means, join up. Maybe you'll face off against me. Who knows? But just under two minutes remaining... Who is going to have the most progress? Who is going to take down the illustrious Gamba that we had going? Who's taking second place? Okay. I'm waiting to say it's robot battle time, but uh, <laughs> the text is not ending here. Just let them fight the robot game. Alright, there we go. Short work being done by Saber with some really well-placed rocket shots. Wow, that was fast. That was quick. See, a little different approach, loving the grenade. It has seemed to be pretty powerful, maybe just as powerful. Uh, I didn't notice the that if the grenades and the rocket launcher might be the same damage or not, actually. I believe they are. It's just the grenade, you have the bonus of going over stuff. Yeah, I only noticed that actually when you had done that in Russia arching it over some of the uh, 
some of the containers. I was like, oh, I thought maybe it was just straight down. But yeah, that's uh, definitely a really good perk. And Mega Retro Man thinking better than to test his luck with that. Checking the other location. And finding out that there are no lasers now. So, tutorial done. <laughs> now for the fun parts here. Uh, you had uh, one section in particular. My goodness, Dragoon. It was floor lasers, electricity, shooting lasers coming in. You just had no escape. Thankfully, you had enough med kits to get through, but it seemed a little unfair to me. And we've actually just heard that we're going to go into sudden death overtime since we have two folks that are pretty much neck and neck here, Crystal Saber and Mega Retro Man. So we are going to hold out here and see who can come in second and finish the game again. Yeah, they are both super close. It's uh, I know I'm interested to see. I am. I'm all in. Sorry if that's too soon, Dragoon, after your terrible gambling experience to say all that. Sorry. I would also say that I would watch this game four times in one night and not get tired of it. So I'm also highly invested in seeing who can pull off the second place and, and third for that matter. Oh, and there was that section we just saw Mega Retro Man get away from that corner that was a little bit of a... Unf oh, oh, the ankles. Oh, dear. Mega Retro Man's ankles are just shattered from that bombardment right now. Yeah, okay, this is not in. an easy section. Okay, little trial and error. Maybe this will be a chance for Saber to catch up, or will Saber also get the treatment? Hitting on laser. Treatment. Nope, go ahead. I was just going to say the ankle treatment at the spa is sold out today. <laughs> Looks like Mega Retro Man has caught on to the dual shield wield. Not mixing up which shield is which just yet. I, I think I might be the only person who has mixing up shield disease. Oh, I would have been there with you. And here comes the fun hallway. <laughs> Time to get balance out the ankle pain with some rib shots here. Trying to see what the ticket is. There's no diagonal, there's no strafe. I swear there are occasional openings there, but they seem to be unpredictable. At least to my novice untrained eye does seem like, yeah, it slows down, but I mean, I don't know exactly how many. And, uh, doesn't look like our friend in the retro community, Slackinator, would be attempting this as a damageless run anytime soon, just because of this one hallway. There we go, going for the tank, the hits. Oh, med kit, can you get it in time? Got it in time, tanking a few more, there we go. Mega Retro Man has taken a death as well, so he's back at the beginning of this section. Oh, I missed it too. I was watching, uh, watching Saber tank those hits. <clears throat> and yeah, chat saying it. That was a costly section, because got to do the whole laser switches all over again once more. We'll see if Crystal Saber can hang in there. Saver with a little bit of patience. Yeah, waiting for that shot before going for the switch. And possibly if Saver picked up that marble, we might get to see the secret ending. I know one of our runners has the marble. I want to believe it's Skate Man. But I'm not sure about the others. I 
know I carried it with me the entire game and never realized what it did until the YouTube comment section when someone filled me in. Oh, okay. Well, especially with uh, just kind of being casual about Bond and not knowing, like, I, I don't get the reference. <laughs> you know, so... Well, and the other thing, too, is if you only ever beat the game once, then how are you going to know? True. How will you know there's a different ending? Haven't stopped all the missile launch sequence. Uh-oh. Save her. Uh-oh. Not home free yet. Where you gotta go? Ooh, couple, couple hits from the big lasers. The laser massage? It, it looked like a massage. <laughs> oh, was that it? No. Seeing that he was there, I believe you were also in this room. Is it up or down? Is it up or down? What questions is... <laughs> what are the questions? The poor crystal saver. Did I activate it? Did I not activate this one? Okay, I think he's, he's double-checking. He sees that, that one was down as well, so maybe believing that down is the way to go. When it comes to your missile switches... I mean, we all know righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, but, uh, you know, they just don't teach you the missile sequences. Oh, there we have it. That's yeah. one more. Is it the last one? That's what I was just wondering. I've forgotten how many there might be, if there's a fourth. And Skateman is just making his way through the Jaws fight. Getting nommed. Okay. There we have it. GG's to Crystal Saver. That one death from Chill Dragoon. And another in that darn hallway right there. But GG's. Wow, really close to the end. And uh, I'd, I'd love to say it again. Skate Man really poured it on at the end. If it wasn't for Marrakesh, this could have been, uh, been super close. Indeed. GG's to Crystal Saver. Mega Retro Man right behind. Yeah, great job. Congratulations to our second place finisher, Crystal Saver, who will be joining us in the booth in just a short moment. We're going to let Mega Retro Man finish up, and then we'll see where Skate is, if we can let Skate finish as well. We'd like to let all four of the runners finish, so we'll see how Skate's feeling and go from there. How are y'all feeling? This has been exciting. Oh yes, a very exciting okay. round this evening. Some really close competition, some really fierce competition at times as well. It's been such a nice time sitting and watching these folks just parse through all of this game's problems. Seeing how each of the runners approached each of the puzzles in a different way, um, definitely the, the, everything that tripped up every one of these runners was different than what tripped me up and probably what was different than what tripped you guys up. I think that's kind of what makes this game a little dynamic. And it does remind me a lot of like Legend of Zelda games in many ways. I know a lot of people will disagree, but I, I really found this game to be quite charming. It's extremely endearing. And I would say you're chopping bushes down. You've got bombs everywhere though you don't really use them the same way there's a lot of parallels there for sure and the only thing that i think zelda doesn't have on this game is a cute sprite with the disco dancing moves which i would have liked to see a lot more in zelda oh yeah some of those animations <laughs> i mean what's the uh sumo wrestler dances while they're patiently waiting their turn to put you through the gauntlet I mean, just too many good things in here. Joining us now in the booth is our second place finisher, Crystal Saver, who had a tremendous run 
GG's and congratulations, Saver. And I will let you guys talk about your run. Give us your thoughts on the game and how you feel you did tonight and all that good stuff. Thank you. Um, I felt like the game was actually fun. It was a little confusing at times to figure out what, you know, which order to go, you know, like there's a lot, it's like LADX, the trading quest. You just got to go back and forth and back and forth a lot of places. But once it got toward the end, oh my God, I started, I, I have so many pages here of bubbles and lines going in every direction and I'm starting to like map out everything. It's like the game just flipped its head a little bit and what it wanted to be. At first, I'm like, oh yeah, it's just a quick explore some uh, huts, uh, some houses or something. And then it just turned into, you got to navigate through this entire maze and you got to make sure that you don't backtrack by accident or something like that. Kind of remind me of Deadly Towers almost. Yeah, it seems like in the back half of the game, it really pulls out all the stops and doesn't do the same thing twice very often. So you're absolutely right in that. And all to say too you you did some great work kind of navigating all of the changes that the game threw at you um some moments where you were a little stalled and then kind of picked up some momentum again and parts of the race where you were neck and neck for second and third place with mega retro man there so it was really cool to see you persevere so congratulations and ggs on your win there Thank you. One thing that I have in the back of my head out of this whole run is near the end, there were like three lasers that kept firing. Did I like force my way through that for some reason? By like using up all my armor and like some med kits or something to force my way through those lasers? Do you mean the hallway that had the four lasers? I think, yeah, if you had put on your, your vest, you could walk through there and not take on too many hits. I don't think you could avoid getting hit with just the shield. Yeah, it, it felt like it was just... I it felt like I was supposed to shut it off somehow, but I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I have all these armors I haven't used. This feels like the end of the game. Might as well try to use it. Yeah, it, it certainly just pours it on there. And I was thinking the same thing that you were probably thinking. And I was like, um, was there a switch? Uh, this doesn't look like there's any openings to walk through. So I think you did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't look like you could shield it either, so it's like, what do you want from me, game? <laughs> yeah. We just and also look, have a we win. Have Mega Retro Man just finished up as well nice. right there, so very close between the two of you. That was a lot of fun, but yeah, great job, Saber. So tr Chill Dragoon finished first? Yep. Uh, I, hold, I gotta look back at this whole video. Uh, I gotta look back at the, the streams and see just like can you finish that far ahead? <laughs> like, I'm trying to think about, like, what could I have done to go any faster? Like, should I have been skipping dialogue? Should I have been using the rocket launchers or the machine gun more often? There was one time where I kept, like, I looked at my inventory. I couldn't find any med kits. And I'm like, did I just accidentally use up all my med kits? And from then on, I was, like, very, like, cautious about using any of my, like, ammo and med kits from that point. I had made a mistake when I played through of using up all my med kits and then saving and continuing and then being mm. back at the beginning of a section and mm -hmm. not having any health and thinking, oh no. It was the part with the tanks too, so it was really tricky. Although I did learn later that there's a part where you can go and farm enemies for them, but goodness, it was not it was not a good mental health moment when I played through mm. it. And I was just playing casually. I couldn't imagine <laughs> that feeling in a race. It's weird. And then, and then the only other thing I could think of is the 50-50 hint I got. At first, I think it was like, go to the casino, go back to catacombs or something to deliver the diamond. And I'm like, okay, the casino, I'm, it's right there. I'm going to go to the casino. Casino, there is no way that you have to gamble so much in a Game Boy game so, to do it. I, I owe you a personal apology, first off. <laughs> Why? But also, there actually yeah. is... A key that you receive if you win, I think it's either twenty or twenty-five thousand. I'm not sure because I didn't do it. And you do get the key to the presidential suite. There's just nothing in there but health packs. Yeah, don't worry, Saber. Uh, I gave him an immediate why you do this, JSR. Because <laughs> I was like, no, you're not putting him back to the table. Oh, uh, but you had a really good win streak. Yeah, that was cool. At the was very cool. end, so it was nice. <laughs> I'm like, I could do this. I could do. Wait a minute. JSO was very specific with those directions. I don't think he's <laughs> lying about that. And that's when I just like, said, I'm out of here. Before even attempting um, to try to 25. 
Also, just uh, heads up, joining us in the booth now is our next finisher, Mega Retro Man. And GG's to you, an op oppressive run with zero of the hints used, still able to compete. It was very uh, fun to watch you play this. Thank you. Yeah, this actually, GG. overall, this wasn't a bad game. This is something I've obviously have never played before. Um, yeah, the, obviously there were a lot of, uh, a lot of deaths that I took, you know, just like, uh, okay, um, okay, how am I going to do this? Um, and that one hallway w at the end was just like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but overall, yeah, this was, this was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there, there are some spots where I got tripped up a bit, but, um, overall this, this game didn't, you know what to do and how to do things didn't seem all that difficult. Yeah, I think a lot of the difficulty probably came from the fetch questing, especially in some of the larger areas. And you're not really sure, like Mega Retro Man, I saw you get to uh, Odd Job without the shield and then die to him. So <laughs> the thing is yeah. when, when you kind of reach that spot, you think, well, do I have all the things I need or am I missing something? Should I try the boss again? Should I go exploring? Like there's so many different ways that you could have gone there. And it was uh -huh. really cool to see you find that shield and get back there and get her done. So nice work on that line of thinking. Yeah, I, I figured, okay, uh, you know, going through the tanks and the arms area, it was like I've pretty much, you know, scrounged through everything that I could, but couldn't find anything that would you know re remotely be helpful i mean i mean shoot i'm shooting rockets at the guy <laughs> and it obviously it didn't work so um so i'm like okay maybe i need to go back and find something then when i came up to that one enemy who was taking multiple hits um rather than normal i was just like this this guy has something and sure enough, he drops a shield, and I'm like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> the number of you folks that were going around just bare fist punching people that were hitting you with rocket launchers was hilarious. And you all made me laugh so much. <laughs> was there an easier way? Probably well, I... rockets. <laughs> yeah, rockets think... or grenades. If you're not squandering ammo, which I am part of the squandering everything consumable club, Gruntiatis and I were having that conversation oh, yeah. a while ago and commiserating quite a lot about how much you're going to spend out because you have to have some drinks to pour out at, after the final boss, right? You can't just use them all in the game. Who does that? You never um, know when you're going to need them. And also, Mega Retro Man, thank you so much for not using any of the lifelines because that also falls perfectly in line with the you never know when you're going to need them. You know, can't use them too soon. Right. And, you know, just, and the fun of playing these games blind is like, OK, let's let's see if I can figure this out and not try and get any help with this. So and I think the other than the whole odd job bit um, and the uh, laser hallway, I think the biggest trouble I had was probably the black market and you know, like, okay, let's, you know, you have to do all the trading and whatnot. But once I, once I got to all that trading, it was like, okay, things are so much easier now. So, and I didn't know how long I was going to be in that casino. Um, my Baccarat game is, uh, not strong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in Las Vegas. I don't even know how to play that game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, you know, with the rules that they gave you on this, I'm just like, um, you know, I'm just going to take guesses. I, I don't, I don't care if there's a, a way to do this. I'm just going to guess. Was that and, one of the things at the bottom that you can uh, gamble on? Um, or was that at the very top? Uh, that was the high roller. The high roller. That is the high oh. roller one. And they do have... They do have baccarat tables at the normal, in the normal casino section. Yeah, I, 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 I have no idea what happened there. I'm just like, okay, just keep hitting player until I win. I think, right? And then I won. <laughs> I'm like, okay. There you go. How how high were you betting though? Um. Were well, in the beginning. Betting at all? 
Uh, no, I was betting actually very low in the back rat table because I didn't have to stay there for that long. I think I only oh, had to okay. win like three times and that's it. And that guy appeared, but I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, oh, so I, do I stay here longer? And I'm like, uh, and I stayed a little bit longer than I left. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm done here. And then somebody told somebody told me, oh, you got to shoot this guy. I'm like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So, so I came across that uh, little peephole at the back of that table in the the high roller section, well before I made it into the presidential section. Yeah, that so, was the very first thing I found. Yeah, so I ended up, you know, finding that, and I was like, okay, so I actually have to go to go into the high rollers area and play. So I went back to the casino, did that, and um, decided, okay, you know, I, I think I'm done. You know, leave with, you know, like, I think I had 11,000 left or something. And then suddenly there's this dude. And I'm you know, like, okay, who are you? And sure enough, it's this is the guy I needed to tranquilize. So I'm like, all right, easy. <laughs> yeah, I was... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Was Blackjack the only way to get early money? Or was there other games there? There were play. other games there. There were there was back uh, again. There was baccarat in the normal tables. Um, I think there was roulette as well. Red yeah, dog. Roulette red you dog. cannot play. Oh yeah, yeah you can't play roulette, I, unfortunately. I yeah, I just stuck with blackjack. It was kind of interesting seeing the luck you guys had because Chill had a pretty substantial lead early on, but Chill had some of the worst casino luck outside of like what I experienced in my playthrough of this. Like you had, I don't know how many times you had to go back to the banker and it wasn't even that you were doing anything wrong. You were just having really bad luck. Um, and then skate man, on the mm -hmm. other hand, got it first try. So this is like uh, unfortunate RNG <laughs> that kind of dictates a little bit net allowed, uh, mega and, and saver to get very close to catching up to you. Um, but mm -hmm. that's kind of just the name of the game, right? Bond gambles a lot. And that's James Bond for you. <laughs> Eh, yeah, RNG is a cruel mistress. I Believe me, saw, I know. <laughs> I only saw like 10 minutes of a James Bond movie, so I didn't know what to expect. I was like, is this like the 64 version that I played? Nope, not at all. No, no. <laughs> Actually, fun fact, this was inspired by it. Um, Nintendo had the license until middle of 1998. And after the success of GoldenEye, which they knew was going to be a good game, but they had no clue how big it was going to be. Um, when it blew up, they said, oh man, we can't afford to renew this license, so we need to get another game out as soon as we can so that we can capitalize on it before somebody else snatches it up. And Game Boy was the easiest one to develop for, so they made it for the Game Boy. And I feel like they did a pretty darn good job for like a year of development time. It was a pretty good game. It was really fun. The only thing that got me really confused was when I started using a satellite and I saw my cur the cursor move in separate directions. So I thought I was trying to track somebody else as opposed to my own movement on the map. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> so the, that uh, the Sahara part, you know, I, I don't know if you know, I, I never used my satellite. What I, I did, did, yeah, what I here. did was um, okay, yeah. So did you? Did you happen to picture like a like a, a square XY graph? In the yep, the coordinates. Yeah, uh, yep. I did the same thing. So just like, okay, so go this way that many times, go that way that many times, and lo and behold, there it is. And then once that, after that part, that's when I started trying these convoluted maps all over the place with like circles and lines connecting all the different paths. Because I think at that point, that's when you had to, had to like explore a whole bunch of areas. Mm -hmm. It was so weird. Yeah, I was going to yeah. use my lifeline so early in the game. I think it was like uh, with the gold ring or whatever you had in the beginning. Like there was a guy locked up in a jail cell. And, yeah. Like, I, I talked to him. I'm like, okay, am I supposed to do something? I'm like, I found paper. I found this. I found that. And I'm like trying to use all my items on everybody. And then I think I used like r r I, I was about to type in the chat. Right as I use the gold ring on the on the key lock or whatever, I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> so I I was almost scared, like, oh no, I almost uh, contacted JSR and I need help, but now I don't. What do I do? But I I good thing I didn't hit enter right away. Hey, yeah, no, I uh... only got a couple hits left. He did it. There you go. Wow. 
with the pistol. GG's. I think we're gonna have to let Skate finish. He's almost done. Oh yeah, yeah. Let him. You guys let go with finish. a little bit extra sudden death. Let him finish up. Absolutely. He's yes, right there. Good. Let him finish. Yeah. Plus, the way Skate has really put a charge on after the Marrakesh section, uh, I'm I'm really intrigued to see just the other play style coming through, and also that terrible four laser hallway. <laughs> that seems to be oh uh, God. interesting for everybody. So yeah, let's see it play out. Yeah, he definitely had some bad luck early on with the trading sequence and some four-time deaths and mm -hmm. got a little mixed up. His lifelines got him out of there, but he may have used him a little later than he probably should have or whatever the case is, he's been charging hard ever since he got out of there. Oh my God. So I just turned on the stream. This thing was in color? <laughs> Sort of, it's Super Game Boy. God dang! I thought it was like, oh, this is just a Game Boy version. There's no color. Okay. Oh my god, it looks so much better in color. <laughs> Doesn't it? Does it does look pretty nice, yeah. We also I noticed that there are certain giveaways in the background that we didn't notice when we were playing through it. But there's, like, if, if you're not familiar with, like, for example, Super Mario Land, if you play it on Super Game Boy, there's a part where the background has a different color. It kind of gives you a heads up that there's a, a part of the ceiling that falls. The same thing kind of happened here. There were like different color bushes and different color rocks that you could see. You could not see in the black and white version. We had no clue that was a thing until we saw it on skate screen. Yeah, it looked like the uh, oh. rock that you had to use the pen exploder on no, it was a completely different color than the rest. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, I I noticed those those rocks were that they looked different, and I was just like. Huh, I wonder. And lo and behold, hey, they exploded. I need a question answered if anybody knows the answer to it. There's this one yeah. guy that wanted to give me the underground pass for something valuable. It Was that a red herring the whole time? So the underground pass is actually an item, but there is a super hard to find. There's two secret items in this game. One oh, is geez. the marble. We'll come back to that in a minute because Skate actually, I think, picked it up. Um, the other is a jeweled egg, a Fabergé egg, yep. which is a uh, an Easter egg, no pun intended, to a part of the movie Octopussy, where Bond has to track down a Fabergé egg. If you find the Fabergé egg, you can trade it in the black market for an underground pass, which gives you a shortcut into the catacombs. The jeweled egg is in a secret passage in the rocks in the area before you get to Marrakesh, or whatever it's called, and you have to, it's an invisible passage, like think the Northeast secret in Zelda 1. Like that. Oh, you have to just, just find rude. this invisible passage. That's just rude. But it's not enough of a shortcut where it wouldn't have made a significant difference. And to be honest, when I, I actually found the egg, um, because I was using a walkthrough, don't don't judge me. And uh I um it actually kind of made me the the market area a little harder for me. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just noticing that Skate Man does not have any med kits. I, so just, I was that. just about to say that. Oh, he is no going to figure kit. out how to do this? I think he might have an idea. He's going to have to diagonal walk. See if he can do it. You can diagonal walk? You have to, like, walk down left here while you're holding the shield out. I don't know if, he can, yeah. if he's figured was... it out yet. I tried that I was, before. I was having it? trouble doing... I mean, I, oh, I wow. eventually got it, but I was having... Nice! But he can only take one more there hit. He's got to do this entire sequence. Yeah. Wow. It was that simple. <laughs> yeah, I didn't remember seeing diagonal walking at any point, so I I can't judge anybody. I, I, was... I you pretty much need to tank some hits, too. I was trying to do that in the beginning. I kept getting pushed back. So I said, okay, that's not the answer. So what is? And I thought, like, you needed to flip the switches up and down a certain way. Like, there was uh, eight of them that you can flip up and down. Like, you know, some of them block your path of electricity. I'm like, do I have to go back to all those and find a combination that works for these lasers? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to brute force this if I can. Yeah, I had a lot of trouble with the area skates in. I was also very tired and ready to go to bed. But um, I got the same thing that I think that happened to you, Saver, where you were missing the one switch, except for I had, I don't know how long it took you to find it. I was walking around here for like 10 minutes. I could not find it. I kept dying. Um, so I, I struggled a lot with this stage. 
Yeah, I kept looking at my map. I'm like, okay, there should be a note here that I might have not written down. So I tried to backtrack as close as possible. And hey, I missed oh, one somehow. Go back. Go back. Go back. Oh, is he going the wrong way? Oh, dear. Go on. Yeah. Go. go back. <laughs> <laughs> to the right. No. Oh, up. No, 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 no. Go back. No. Go back. No, no. Well, hungry. <laughs> wrong shield crew. Yeah, he's part of the club with us. One of us. So, did the mirror actually block like rocket launchers or something, or was, no. is it just for this last stage? Yeah, I think it's just for this last section, so it only blocks the lasers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Wait, and no health refill to start refill. this? Ooh. Oh, really? His health back when he died. I think it depends how That's he saved rude. it. <laughs> oh no. Because I noticed that oh. he saved right before he went into the laser section, the four lasers in the hallway. So yeah. I didn't pay attention to how he saved, but. You can never leave. <laughs> I hope he can. He, he pushes through because uh, the other item, the other secret item is that marble that Skate picked up. And I don't think any of you three found it. The marble is um, the way to unlock the secret ending. Of course, this is a great James Bond uh, game full of all the you get to see Money Penny, M, Q, Jaws, and Ajab, which, by the way, I loved those fights. But um, there's one more of the James Bond tropes that you probably didn't see because there is an ESRB, and that is that James Bond gets around like a record. Um, and if you pick up the secret item, the marble, you get a implied special ending, so to speak. If you can huh. fill in the blanks there. <laughs> <laughs> so if he's able to finish, I mean, it's it's still very much just implied tongue in cheek stuff, but it's still, you know, Bond. Ha it's, it's a Bond trope. And if you want to see that, you have to find the secret item. My heart is pounding for him. <laughs> yeah, this is an intense level. I think he'll get it this time, though. I think he's got it. Does he have any vests? No. He used no. The fight. He barely finished that boss fight. He had to use a pistol. Was yeah, that? I, I was just going to say, I got wrecked really badly here, too, when I played. I think I had to walk through this section two or three times. Yeah, when I heard somebody finish, it kind of, it kind of tried to speed up to get... Uh, to finish within the 30 minute mark because i didn't know how far you know this game has to go left and i'm like why does it keep going why does it keep going so i kind of forgot most of the bosses other than i think it's odd job that you had to like shield his hats or something after that i'm like mm -hmm. anything you see just try to kill as fast as possible <laughs> well, I was, was there any to... moments that stuck out to you guys in particular that really um that really was like your favorite part of the game. Like the reason I asked that is like, I really enjoyed the odd job fight. I thought that was really clever and fun. There you go. Um... God, I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, the jaws fight was, you know, once I, once I saw him get tripped up with those uh, the steel uh, magnets, um, that you know, once I saw that he was getting stuck there, I was like, "Oh, okay, so this is how you do that fight." Um, favorite moments. Um, I can't think of any. <laughs> I kind of like the stage to get uh, before you get to Odd Job, where you have to actually go around without like your weapons and try to find weapons, but also find a shield and try to navigate your way through the whole entire maze. Like, I don't know, that part for some reason was fun, even though I kept dying <laughs> a lot. I also really liked the desert. I thought that was cool. Desert just came and went for me, <laughs> except it's like, oh, I got a canteen. Oh, I finally got water and I got six water. What am I supposed to do? I tried using it, nothing happened. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the desert <laughs> yeah. area is finished. I'm like, okay. I died randomly by changing screens and I didn't see an enemy on screen. So I'm like, did I just die from like overheat and I needed to use the canteens or something? But I couldn't figure out what to do with it. 
It's funny was I went like um I want to say I went over two two screens to the right and one screen up and suddenly I was dead. I'm like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> Three screens and I'm dead? How how does this work? And then um and then I died again um when I actually made it to the to the spot that you're supposed to be. Mhm. Mm like I got to that screen and then suddenly I died. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna assume this is where I need to be, but I'll try it again and see what happens. Um, the reason I died there was uh, one of the scorpions got me on on one of the screens. So uh, that little bit of health that I lost went to that death. So. This game man really doing a great job, yeah. isn't he? My abs oh, are let's go. right now. Watch. <laughs> Come on. You're Any right there. Laser from the floor, electricity spot. He's got to pay attention to everything. Come on. Oh. Come on you're right. You're oh, right the there. Right oh, yeah. Does he have the floor activated? I believe so. I Just got to get on, past this. Diagonal walk. Don't fail now. You can do it. Just yes. one more. GG. Nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. GG. Nice. Yo, get your GGs in chat, y'all. That was impressive. Good job. Clutch finish, and we should see the special ending as well. I pretty much spit out my water when I saw this ending the first time. Oh, <laughs> well, here we go. Joining us is Skate Man 222. Here come that boy with the clutch ending. Yo, <laughs> GG's, man. Yo, thank you. GG. GG's. What a finish. That oh, was GG. amazing. Sorry, Marrakesh oh. was so bad on you, but uh, amazing yeah. job from then on. Uh, you really so played through it. Can you do me a big favor and let's see the ending? Because you're going to get a different ending than the others did. Oh, what? Really? Yeah, because you found the marble. Oh, interesting. Well, so the marble, bond. it becomes a boat, and then you go on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and a then pocket. you have a bond moment. Bennett, Bennett. <laughs> Relax, darling. British submarine. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what what is that scene just not there at all without the marble or is it replaced with something else you don't, I don't get know, it I, I didn't actually get i ah. got the marble in my playthrough what did you guys see that when you got your ending or no I don't no else, i didn't also else, did they, they just walked down the beach and that was it so with the marble it's a it's a pocket boat essentially <laughs> I wonder what dehydrated boats. Huh? <laughs> Wait, what is it? Is that like those paper towels that you get like a little like cube, and when you get them wet, they like blow up into a full size beach towel or whatever? What yeah. an age we live in. <laughs> it's like those little dinosaurs they used to put in water, and they'd get real big. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congrats! This is our first time on Lifeline where all four of our runners were able to finish. GG's, this was a very impressive group and you all did outstanding. You should all be very proud. Nice. Thank you. Sweet, thanks. Thank yeah, you. and Skateman, congratulations on covering so much ground. You got stuck in Marrakesh forever oh. and then totally worked so hard to pull up the rear there. It was really cool to see you just go through all of those motions and think everything through really quick. So nice work on that. Thanks. Yeah, I I don't know. I was just getting really confused and like the hints. I was like, go go west of the hotel to find like the lab, and then I couldn't find the lab. I'm like, where is this lab? I must be like, I'm, I must be misinterpreting it. And then I just tried my hardest to like use my speed run brain with like saving quick strats to like get back to stuff as quickly as I can. And it, I guess it kind of worked a little bit. I don't know. And we were all in awe at your casino prowess as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I heard. Apparently that was extremely lucky. <laughs> it was phenomenal. We watched poor Chill Dragoon walk up to the teller 
about a bajillion times and oh, then no. you coasted in there and i think what was that jsr first try or something like that it was... might have been second try but i'm pretty sure it was first do you did you have to get your money back at all i Kate? i never had to get my money back but what i did was so like i basically just got super lucky in blackjack to get enough to get into the baccarat room and then once i was in the baccarat room i thought i had to get like even more than the amount that i had like the guy already spawned and I was still playing <laughs> the Baccarat to get even more. And I kind of like save scum that because I noticed you can like, you can save your amount. So if you like lose a lot, you can just reload your save and get your amount back. So I kind of did that. Yeah, that's a smart approach because then you're not always getting kicked out. Because if you fall under the 2500 and then you leave, you have to get back to 2500 to get back oh. to the high roller room. So I, oh, I think no. if you, all of you circumvented that whole problem because I was a fool when I played and I fell too low and left <laughs> and then thought, oh my God. And then it took me forever to get back in there. Oh, geez. And how much does the like the teller give you? A thousand dollars. A thousand, oh, okay. So GG's Wait. to all you. Congrats again, Chill Dragoon, on a very impressive run. And to all four of you giving us this phenomenal showcase tonight and allowing us to see a game that not very many people know about. And that needs to change. I mean, I bet this is a great speed run personally. But just in general, this was a game that flew under my radar as well. And thanks to Hungry Gorilla for playing through it and making it phenomenal. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to shout it out right now. Y'all need to go check out her review of this game. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's on YouTube. But um opened up our eyes to it and allowed us to explore this game and present it to you folks which you skillfully mastered without very much help at all it was a great show and, and you should all be very happy of your performances tonight and we hope to see you guys again in a future episode potentially yeah i hope so yeah this Good. was a lot of fun I'd, I'd be totally down to do something like this in the near distant future it was yeah, same here. Fun. Same here. This was a lot of fun. I, I kind of wish there was more um, places where lifelines were needed, but I think for the most part, this is like, imagine we come back like a year later. It's like, okay, it's the rematch. All four of us have to do the same game. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. Th thanks to you, JSR and uh, you, you guys for uh, putting this on. I feel like I have to now blindfold this since it's another game I have on my list all of a sudden that I completed. So thank you. <laughs> I, I can't take the credit here. Um, it was all on my co-producer, Maya Copa, who has been keeping the show running. And it's been a lot of work that he's been doing behind the scenes to keep this going. So I want to shout him out for allowing Lifeline to not only continue, but be the great show that it has been. And also to you folks for running. And finally, to my wonderful commentators, which we do have to get this bad boy wrapped up. So hmm. I'm going to let our two commentators... Uh, talk for a few moments as we prepare a raid target for you guys. Um, but thanks everyone for participating and for watching. And I'm going to let you folks take us on out. All right. Well, I guess I'll go first. Thank you so much again, everybody, for your wonderful performances. And thank you, Grunt, for being a wonderful co-host. It's a shame we did not get to sing our great Log Driver's Waltz duet, but perhaps the Canadian special will make a triumphant return in the future. And I look forward to coming back around to the Speedrun Hall of Fame again as a viewer, maybe even as a future participant, question mark. Nobody knows, but I'll <laughs> stop talking and let Grunt get a word in. I'd just also like to thank everybody, and it was a fantastic Canadian co-commentary combo for everybody to uh, hopefully enjoy. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe some point we'll we'll get that log driver's waltz uh, just thrown in there smoothly. I mean, there's so many segues to sing the log driver's waltz. I'm surprised we didn't tonight, but no, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it's like everyone in chat seemed to have a good time as well. Uh, GG again to everybody. Fantastic night. So we are going to send it on over to Willard J. Bradley. Uh, please stick around. Show some love and support. And yeah, um, it was an amazing time. Thank you, runners. Thank you, JSR. And yes, definitely thank you, Maya, for an amazing job. Until next time. <laughs>